Hello everyone. Welcome to the Women's Speed Chess Championships with Chess.com and FIDE. I'm Jennifer Shahadi and today I'm here with Irina Crush to call a match that I am so excited about. Yeah, this is a battle of two OGs in the world of chess. Uh, Alexandra Kostinuk and Antoinette Stefanova, two former women's world champions. Uh, Stefanova became the women's world champion in 2004 in Libya and uh, and uh, Alexandra became the world champ in 2008 in Nalchik. So these ladies have been both around for a really long time, Jen. Absolutely. And I think actually Alec, um, Antoinetta became the world champion in Russia because I was there. And you were there too, I believe. You think so? Kalmykia? Kalmykia, really? I think. Yeah. Oh, that Kalmykia 2004. Oh, Lib what was Libya? Oh, Libya was just, oh, I, I remember. Libya was 2004, but it was like the the open world championship where she also actually was now that I think back to it. Yes, exactly. As yes, the women's right. world champion. Yeah. But Antoinette and Alexander, I mean, really two of my favorite players. That's why I was so excited to call this match. I think that for me in the history of women's chess, they both represent so much like Kostenyuk, um, just really ahead of her time and promoting the game. And Stefanova is, always been somebody I really admired because she was always winning the most games while also having the most fun. And here we have some insights into their play on chess.com. Well, one thing you're going to notice right here is that Alexandra has a much larger sample size of blitz games. She streams at chess queen um, and she does a lot of work with chess.com. So she's played a ton of games. Um, Antoinetta has played way fewer games, but we'll see that actually in terms of accuracy, um, she outrates uh, Kostanyuk um, and losses by flag. She also outrates Kostanyuk. So that's actually not something that you want to have a high score on, right, Irina? Yeah, well, so it wins by flag 34% of the time. So that means that she's flagging her opponents, right? She's both flagging her opponents, but also losing on time, right? More frequently. Interesting. Yeah, I, I guess it makes sense, though. And I think even... Antoinette has been like that in um, classical chess sometimes. There's this kind of technique of getting into time pressure and then your opponent gets into time pressure too, but you play better than them in time pressure. Actually, I'm not speaking from experience. I don't, <laughs> I didn't really play that well in time pressure, but it is something that, you know, you see some great players do. Um, so that is, of course, a useful skill in the speed chess champs. Um, let's take a look at the format of this exciting event. Well, if you've never watched a speed chess champs before, welcome. Um, you're going to love it. What happens is the time control gets faster and faster as the match progresses. We start with just five minutes with a one second increment. We'll do that for 90 minutes. Then we move on to three minutes with a one second increment. And finally, the bullet portion, which is only 30 minutes, but because they're bullet games, it allows a very good bullet player to um, string a bunch of wins together and sometimes change the score. Yeah, it allows someone to really uh, catch up in the final portion, right? Because uh, just so many games in that final part. So a lot can happen even if someone is leading uh, by quite a substantial amount going into the bullet. So let's take a look at the Smarter Chess stats brought to you by ChessGoals.com. Uh, we have Antoinette actually coming in at a slightly higher blitz rating on chess.com, um, slightly higher bullet rating as well. And interestingly, uh, despite all of that, the match prediction is that Kestinuk wins uh, by one point. So it's supposed to be a really close match, just like our first match was between uh, Vaishali and Asobayeva. Although there, I have to say, you know, the chess stats uh, prediction it was accurate, but it was like the opposite, right? Jen, um, I think they predicted also by Eva to win, but it turned out that uh, Vaishali won in a very close match. Here it's predicting, um, it's predicting Kostinuk to win uh, by a small margin. And I think that's a, probably a, quite a realistic uh, prediction, right? She's known as a very strong blitz player, although I think uh, Stefanova is also uh, no, known to enjoy blitz. Well, they're both killers. Look at how competitive they are. You love to see it. And yeah, I mean, just keep in mind that when you're looking at a prediction, we're really looking more like the multiverse. So if we play this match 100 times, Kostinuk wins 52 times, something like that. It's not saying that like because she's a favorite, she's going to win every time. 
Um, I, I think, though, that it, it does make sense. I mean, it's hard not to uh, pick Kostinyuk if you're if you're totally pressed because she yeah. does have that much larger sample size. But let me ask you, Irina, mm -hmm. who do you pick today? Who are you feeling today? We just got a shot of the two players getting ready for the match. So yeah, I um, would have to say overall Alexandra, right? Just because, you know, she is really known as like a blitz specialist. Um, she's also been like in a really good chess streak in the recent times, right? She's won the World Cup last year. So I think just in, 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 in chess in general, she's at a good point in her career. And, um, you know, Antoinetta has slowed down a little bit. Um, so, I mean, that's very understandable. She's also a few years older um, than Alexandra. So I think I'd have to give the preference to Alexandra uh, based on what I know. But, you know, I think anything is possible. Yeah, it encouraged me. I would have said Alexandra by a wide margin, but I didn't realize that uh, Stefanova's bullet rating was so high. So yeah. that's encouraging because those bullet games matter. And by the way, Blitz does turn into bullet, right? Um, and here we have um, a little unusual Roy Lopez to kick off the action. That's exciting to me. I love the Roy Lopez. I know Alexandra has won some very impressive games on this and with both colors. Um, yeah, this so is a Steinitz variation, right? Where like, after uh, a6 bishop a4 the delay i think it's called a delayed steinitz where black plays d6 this op opening is named after the first world champion wilhelm steinitz and interesting you know white did not go for the plan with c3 and d4 building up a bigger center also very common she just went d4 right away and stefanova goes for this 97 move not something i'm very familiar with but i think she likes these kind of systems actually now that i think back to her games i think she likes this 97 and g6 bishop g7 uh setup oh look at that move um it looks like we just have to move c4 by alexandra um yeah very interesting she wants to go d5 and you know i mean she will go d5 right uh at some point it's going to turn into a, a king's indian type of structure Right, with that bishop on f8 at the moment, um, well, uh, Antoinette just played knight g6, so she now plays bishop e7. Of course, the big difference here is that normally we've got that bishop on g7 in the king's in the end. Um, I think, like, I've always found these positions to be a little tricky for white to play. Like, obviously, white should be better, but sometimes it's hard to figure out how to get that advantage, and that can be really frustrating. Sometimes it can make you eat some time. Like we see right now, Alexander is going mm. into a bank. Interesting, interesting, Jen. You know, I guess this is the difference between an E4 player and a D4 player because um, as a D4 player, I definitely would have, you know, been very happy to play D5 and go into this typical King's Indian um, pawn structure. But Alexander played Rook E1 which is, um, yeah, it wouldn't have been my choice just because, you know, if you're going to go D5 at some point, your rook doesn't really need to be on E1. It's perfectly fine on F1, right? So she has a kind of a different approach to this position. You can see that she's holding off with mm -hmm. the move D5. Um, and black just castle. She played H3. And Stefanova takes on D4. Actually, it seems like this is working out pretty well for her. She's like trading off pieces, getting Alexandra's knight to the side of the board. And I can see her bishop coming to f6 pretty soon. Yeah, I actually think that, you know, this has not been handled super well by Alexandra because even though she has a space advantage with these Meroxy bind pawns, yeah, first of all, it's about to be chipped away at by the move b5. And second yeah, well, of all, mm, okay, yeah, go ahead, Jen. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, that knight on a4 now getting hit. Um, that's what happens when you get your knight off sides like that is she's played knight to c3. Um, but that said, uh, now that there's not like that anchor square on f4 for the knight, is the knight on g6 potentially misplaced? Yeah, the knight is uh, not so bad at the moment there because there's no one restricting him too much. Right? He's still got e5 and maybe potentially, you know, f4, h4. And, you know, the two, two pairs of pieces have already been traded off the board. So, like, white space advantage with these two pawns is not that significant. Um, yeah, you know, it's, been, it's been kind of an incredibly successful opening for black. And I think, you know, white really should kind of regret not going for that D5 move, seizing the space advantage. Well, there we have it. We have the knight hopping to the E5 square. Um, the queen on D5 is looking really powerful. Yeah. Um, but this move knight e5 did introduce the possibility of getting c6 and outsteam the queen. 
Um, and then um, she'll have to go back to perhaps an unenviable square, like D2 or D1. And then yeah, the pawn exactly. on C4 would hang. So um, right now, that's actually a really concrete threat. C6, you can't go queen D4 because knight F3 check just wins your queen. And she's like king to F1? What's the idea Whoa. that... She wants to go, like, what does she want to do, actually? That is such a weird move. What is going on, Judd? You know, she when you're going to have to play king F1 in the middle game, it's not a good sign. This has been, like, this is, like, kind of very dubious looking. Okay, I mean, knight C4 should happen. Yeah, maybe she has some idea of trying to win back the pawn with queen B3. She just goes queen C2. Um, no, this, this is looking so good for Antoinette, indeed. I didn't get that king F1 move either. Wow. Yeah, just very simple move D5. I like it. I mean, get those pawns going. I mean, right now, Antoinetta is looking very convincing. I don't know what I would play. Rookie A, Queen D7, something like that. Queen D6, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's looking very in flow, too. She, I, I like how focused she is, even though this is going so well for her. By her face, you couldn't really tell. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't tell whether, whether this is going well or badly, because she's not letting up any focus, even though... Um, she has this beautiful um, start to the match. So rook to b1, yeah. played by Alexandra, queen d6, um, just continuing her development. So she's going to follow up, probably putting her other rook on the d-file as well. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, I don't know, will white play b3? If they play b3, they actually got to deal with knight a3. And maybe just bishop a3, queen f4 is even a possibility. Or even just, you know, B takes A3, I suppose. Okay, she went back. I mean, that's fine. Um, don't forget G5 could sometimes come into the position because you've got that Queen H2 threat. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't think it necessarily would have been good because of Knight H5, but it's something that another thing that Alexander has to worry about. Yeah, at some point, I suppose, I mean, there could be a trade on E4, Rook takes E4, Knight D5. That looks reasonable as an idea i mean maybe just h6 as well like she might want to just get ready for an end game okay so she's mobilizing her rooks in the center well also there's some combination of tactics here i mean like with taking on a4 on e4 and then queen d1 check that just needs to be constantly watched by alexandra um never fun in blitz to just always be watching your back like that mm. so she's played bishop b3 but that does allow this move d4 which antoinetta played instantly yeah oh c5 looks nice here I gotta say, just c5 at some point, defend everything, and then like improve the knight from b6. Where would we like to see that knight, Jen? Maybe d7 and e5. Oh, she has a different idea. c3. Um, she, she played c4 with the idea of queen c5 and getting that knight to c4, Ooh. but the engine hates it. Yeah, um, knight d3. Oh. Wait, wait knight d3. Hitting and then the b4 pawn hangs okay mm -hmm. so instead she went in this direction but that's going to leave the pawn hanging on d5 at the end of the variation right like rook takes d5 here mm -hmm. rook e8 check king g7 it seems like um that holds up fine yeah she has to find this move rook takes d5 and oops she did not find it maybe she was afraid of that check on the back rank and now white gets herself out of the pin now what she's threatening queen c4 still looks pretty nice for black um, there appears to be some cool counterplay with this move H5 coming all of a sudden and uh, the pawn going to H6 and like back rank threats. Is she going to find it? I think she will. Yes. I think she will. Well, I mean, she did play H4, right? Oh, but she's played Bishop F4. But I mean, honestly, there's there's going to be a play here too. I mean, this yeah. is now turning into the, one of those bullet games and D6 is coming. Oh, well, now we're in an end game where i don't know what's going on the both yeah. pawns are nice move nice move black you know freed up the d4 square for the rook to get behind the pawn it's actually an ideal square so that's pretty cool that she found that so black is still ah. maintains an advantage in uh in this position after rook d4 you know because she basically has this side majority still left and White plays f3. We expect rook d4, I think, is the obvious move. Nope, she plays h6. All oh right. my god, so, so many topsy-turvy. Those are people who are watching the engine bar getting seasick, Irina. <laughs> so don't watch it. Put some, like, uh, what, what post-its or something or tape on it. Yeah, this is an interesting <laughs> moment. Okay, so she says no 
to the rook trade. Uh, I don't know. Can you take on b4? It's actually a pretty nice pawn to take. Take the pawn on b4. And um, after rook a2, maybe just kind of like, oh, activate, activate the rook. But she played d7. And now rookie eight is an idea, right? Yeah, even this so rookie eight, well, even rook d4 is an idea. Sorry about that. We've got some fans. We got some fans, Irina. Yeah, I can, I can hear. I can hear. Uh, so king e2. Uh, so is white got the upper hand now? Is there rook d4, that move that like- What? Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Before. Oh my gosh, rook d4. What an idea. Okay. It's pretty nice I, because it stops rook d5. Because if you go here, they're gonna go rook d5. Okay, but she, she has to find it. That's a tough move to find. Wow, Irina. <laughs> Bishop d2, now rook d5, you get it in. I think actually Antoinette saw it because she seemed so relieved to play rook oh. d5. It's now, what, what's going on now? It's actually equal material. I mean, this looks likely to end in a draw, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the excitement has sort of fizzled out. And while black is very solid, I would say their pawn structure is a bit better. Uh, you know, if uh, someone decides to lose, it probably would be white. Although right now, okay, mm. white, white now has a pawn. Yeah, got the pawn to a5 that yeah. they can back. more and maybe I mean the both rooks are active, but it's easier to target that a5 pawn as you yeah, yeah, out. yeah. Actually, white is gonna be playing rook a6 very soon. Wow. Oh, and now Ooh, look at F4. that. Wow. Ooh, F4. Oh, and f6 is hanging. And look at this, that's, Alexandra. That's a big, big catch for white. Wow, two extra pawns. That was totally unexpected. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God, how did this happen? Alexandra had such a tough opening. Yeah, this was an incredible, incredibly disappointing game for Stefanova. Um, she really kind of outplayed Alexandra at some point, but on those like that, you know, last 15 seconds, uh, Alexandra. Oh, wait, 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 is she winning now? I'm not so sure. Uh, actually, I'm not so sure. There's only one pawn left. Whoa, I think you can trade here. I think you can trade the bishops. We, we need to go back and talk about that. Oh yeah, because it's basic rook end game and then see if you can, um, yeah, yes. I think you're right though. Yeah, that's an important rook end game because now that you didn't trade that, you would think that white would have more winning chances. Usually the extra pieces um, give you these opportunities. Yeah, that you see. well, I mean, I don't know if she's gonna sack her bishop on a5 because- Oh, that's, yes. That's not a lot of fun. You know, she missed that chance. She didn't want to like suffer into that. I understand. But now I'm not so sure that she's actually able to stop the pawn. No, actually. now this is way worse. Yeah, now she can't stop the eighth one at all. All right. And she's well, lost. Yeah. Alexandra has won the first game on time after a treacherous opening. Um, so yeah. Stefanova can feel good about the opening. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Alex just kept fighting. I guess that key moment was. Remember when Stefanova did not take the pawn on d5? Oh, yeah, point, yeah, yeah, yeah. After that point, it was really anyone's game. It just kept going back and forth. Whereas before that, Stefanova really had some great control. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're waiting for them to get into the next game, which is starting right now. But yeah, this was, uh, this was yeah, very disappointing. I would I have to say, I almost feel like I'm very, I'm very good at playing games like that, Jen. Just like Antoinetta, you know, playing playing a decent game and then just totally messing it up in the time trouble. It's happened to me so many times. So I was like, oh, yeah, I could have done that. Um, you relate. You relate. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, classical chess. You, when you get an opening like that, you can win with yeah. grace and style and at your leisure, but not so easy in blitz. Um, so what do we have here? We're in game two, Alexandra starting off with a big win, now with the black pieces. Yeah, so we have a Catalan in this uh, in this opening. And I would say, some, I guess I'm not too surprised. Yeah, this is part of Stefano's repertoire. She also does like more offbeat things. You know, like I know she's been experimenting with this like Knight C3 Jobava London. And I mean, the Trumpowski is something she used to play quite a bit of just the regular London system. So here she goes for something more mainline. Alexandra also goes for something that is in her repertoire, like a kind of queen's gambit declined. And so 
The only thing here, uh, when they take on c4, yeah, bishop g2 and bishop d7. Okay, that, that move is like something I'm less familiar with because I think, uh, well, black probably has a lot of moves here, right? There's knight c6, there's a6, there's bishop d7. Um, I mean, the idea is familiar to me, but that exact move board I'm not so sure about. Let's see where we are right now in the game. Okay, we've definitely had some action. Uh, E4 looks quite nice for white. And interesting that Alexandra responds with this weird uh, looking move, rookie Ooh. eight. Look at this D5 though. This is a problem. The bishop is trapped on C6. Yeah, you know, this is actually amazing that like it's going to be 1-1, uh, one, one, I think pretty quickly. Now, how did this happen, Irina? How did we win a piece so quickly as Antoinetta? Yeah, well, she just pushed up the E4 pawn and Black didn't do, like, she could have taken this pawn. Yeah, she had to right? take that pawn because I guess D5 is just a concrete threat. Yeah, I mean, why do you feel better? White still has like a very yeah. nice position after Knight D4 and just getting the bishop hair. Um, but Antoine, uh, Alexandra thought that she was stopping the move D5 by like protecting her bishop and lining up the rook with the queen. But it turns out like it doesn't because the, there is no good discovery at the moment. And the bishop is just trapped. And um, bishop e3, yeah, this bishop is not even being allowed to go to b5. No b5, no a4, and no in-between moves with the knight on d7. Just losing that piece. And what a piece it is to lose, Irina. Losing yeah. the, the light squared bishop in the Catalan is, is, not, is not one that you can really make up for easily. Um, but we yeah. know that uh, Kostinyuk is very good at um, making things a little bit more interesting than they seem. But I don't know. This one's going to be tough, especially because Antoinette still has plenty of time. Yeah, she has a lot of time. I mean, okay, there is a little bit of this weakness to the king, but, you know, she's going to go king h1. And I think she will just stay on these light squares. Maybe rook d2 here. Okay, she played b3. Uh, what does white want? Well, I guess, I, you know, one of white's ideas actually could be rook e1, but not any, mm, yeah, not anymore. Rook f1 is like more logical and try to do something to the f7 pawn, I would say. Yeah, I love that idea because the thing is right now it's, uh, it's opposite colored bishops, <laughs> except I also yeah. have a knight. So it's going to be hard for you to defend f7 as many times as I can attack it. And look at this, mm. um, just the queen trade. Well, that's going to make things easier. Yeah, rook c2 now. Yeah. And just knight, uh, okay, knight e5. Yeah, okay, knight d5. Yeah, but she's just defending the pawn and then she'll park that bishop on d5. Exactly. Oh, boy. And yeah. Uh, Eventually, just just make sure not to fall for rook takes d5. That was the, that was the same tactic from last game, right? Yeah. And of course, of course, she doesn't, and instead improves her rook. And uh, this is how is she going to attack f7 one more time? Maybe a rook yeah. lift. It's pretty nice. Four. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's pretty nice maneuver of her knight to the center of the board. Ah, uh, what now? Okay, h4, sure. I like just knight f4, looking to go knight h5. That looks... But look at this nice little uh, play here by Alexandra, a3, trying mm -hmm. to introduce the idea of rook b2. You gotta keep fighting. And mm -hmm. tonight it does have two minutes left. Yeah, how about like knight f4 to h5? Yeah. yeah, I like that too. I mean, I guess she's a little worried about rook b2, but now that you we played c5 and a2 is protected, Mm -hmm. um, this should be quite easy. You were getting a lot of it. This, this game looks like um, it is going to go in Antoinette's uh, uh, direction. We've got a lot of interesting comments in the chat. People are asking about the candidates. It is a rest day of the candidates today. So that's why this is the show, Women's Speech Chess Championship. We also had a question about a, whether a woman has ever played in the candidates. Yes, we have had. Yep. Grandmaster uh, Judith Polgar. 2005, Jen, in Linares Morelia. Was that it? Um, I think it was in, in Mexico, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, like, so there was Morelia is in Mexico. Was it, I don't know, for some reason, yeah. Maybe it was just the whole thing was in Mexico, right, that year? Yeah. 2005 or 2006. 
And um, yeah, and she played, and of course she also played in many of the World Cups as well and did quite well in one of them, making it um, to like the uh, final four, I believe. Yeah, I remember Dominguez. Dominguez, Dominguez, yeah, yeah. She had a great run there in that tournament. Uh, Who else did she beat? She beat some other really strong player. Was um it, yes was, but, it maybe, was it Fiddler or Gelfand um yeah, yeah and Gelfand. yes well of course Judah Polgar um legend of women in chess uh top female player of all time and these two players also two of the greatest of all time I, I talk about all these players as well as you Irina Crash in my new book Chess Queens so yes um, I was really excited to do the commentary today because in addition to you, um, Kostyniuk and Stefanov are, are two of the players that are mentioned very prominently in this book for, for different reasons. I mean, like I said, I've always looked up to Stefanova because of her um, fun-loving personality, her unique chess style, and her um, incredible accomplishments. And then Kostyniuk, honestly, I think a lot of the chess boom, um, she really predicted you know, she had been doing the types of things that um, so many chess professionals do now, I'd say like 15 years ahead of the time. Yeah. Jen, you recently presented your book at the Marshall Chess Club um, at an, an event for, was it was for women, women and uh, girl players? Oh, yes. It was so How did that fun. go? Oh, it was so fun. I did an event at the Marshall Chess Club about chess queens. Yeah. And it was just great to see so many teen girls and you know, girls in their 20s, um, you know, also some little kids um, who, uh, you know, had gotten more into chess during the pandemic and wanted to hear about some of these great legends of the game. Like yourself, Irina. Thank you, Jen. You know, I, I want to put up, I, I've been planning to do it. I've done like a photo shoot with chess queens, like with the book. <laughs> you know, me and the book and in St. Louis, you know, and I meant to fit up some of these nice pictures. So, uh, Watch out for that, guys. I'll probably be putting up on that on my Facebook sometime soon. Oh, beautiful. Love to hear it. I mean, yeah. you're, you're you're not that big on social media. So it, it like it, it means yeah. a lot to get, yeah. to get you on there. <laughs> uh, so we've got another um Roy Lopez, another delayed Steinitz. I mean, hey, the game went well for Stefanova in terms of the opening in the middle game last time. So why not repeat it? Hey Jen, but- I just wanted to mention about social media. You know, I recently discovered Twitter. Oh, are you on Twitter? I think I follow I'm on you Twitter, there. But, but not, you know, I, I mean, I discovered Twitter University because I just realized that Twitter is like, the, you know, the, actually one of the best places to learn from really smart people. There's so many smart people there. If you find them, you follow them, you get all these insights, a lot of cool topics. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, of course, I've known it when I say I've discovered Twitter. I've known about it for a long time, but to actually use it, um, you know, for anything that that's been a recent thing for me. Oh, and and where, how can we follow you on Twitter, Irina? Oh, yeah. You don't need to follow me. I, I never actually say anything, Jen. I just do it to learn myself. Oh, you're absorbing. Okay, yeah. got it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Twitter gets a lot of flack sometimes because it's very, like, polarizing. But there are some really great things about it. And mm. um, I, I, I think it makes people better writers because you have to condense your thoughts into such short nuggets. Mm. Now, this is actually a fascinating position, Irina. I'm like... I'm trying to understand what's going on. I mean, this is why I love the Roy Lopez because it's such a rich position. I, I have no idea who's better. Yeah, it's um, amazing. It's so interesting that Castanuk re- just refuses to ever play the move D5 in these positions, which I really thought, like, you know, uh, you know, it's White's main idea, but she wants to play these positions with, like, uh, you know, a, 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 quite a different approach. Like, instead of Rook E1, like she did in the other game and C4. Okay, she actually went for C3 and D4 here, but again, without D5, so she goes for D3. In my opinion, it's all, you know, it's all quite unusual uh, play by white. And let's see where they are now. So black has, yeah, pretty cool square on D8, I think, for this night. It's not that good on C6 anyway, so it doesn't mind leaving. It can come back to E6. And actually looks comfortable again or black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like that bishop on d5 looks like almost misplaced. I mean, luckily we're not threatening c6 at the moment because rook takes d7. But if that queen were to move, c6 could be an issue. Like, look, yeah, queen c8, exactly. And now it looks like c6 is actually a threat, although there's rook takes e7. 
So we do have to do something about that before that becomes a real threat, right? But you're pointing out the knight is protecting it now. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't know what white does. Well, she had to play queen a2 to make space for her bishop on b3. Hmm. Yeah, so I think the issue with white's position is certainly like these two pieces over here, right? Like the knight can't move, and that means the bishop can't move. I mean, the rook's not great. So I mean, these pieces like the rook on a7, these three look all right. It's actually the other half that looks less convincing. Um, you know, black, I think, is very comfortable. I mean, at some point, I think we should see this move knight e6. Like, isn't that knight wanting to get off the back of the board? I would I would want to improve myself, my, my lot in life like that, Jen. And I would like to consider attacking here as black. That's why, you know, I had mixed feelings about the move bishop f6. I guess she kind of had to um but maybe she felt like she needed to protect that pawn on e5 or get at completely out of the pin but yeah. sometimes in these roy lopez as you see ideas like king h8 and f5 mm -hmm. if i could get that in here as black and kind of punish you for your pawn structure being weakened i'd be very excited yeah there's also there's a very nice plan here also of like taking here and trying to go to c5 and c4 yeah she found something uh, quite similar the idea of like blocking off that bishop, which I think makes sense. Um, bishop d5, though, let's put it mm -hmm. back in there now that you, you know, we talk about outpost knights, but here we have an outpost bishop. Yeah, this bishop is quite nice. Can black challenge it in any way? Is there any sort of like knight e7 move? I still wish there was a way I could get an attack in here as black because. I feel like that is, that's my potential in this position, but look at this move queen a6, threatening to trade mm -hmm. queens, which I think would be a major coup for white. So that's why um, Antoinetta played queen c5, try to avoid that. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Because so I have a lot of squares. I mean, I'm even thinking about crazy stuff like knight b3 and bishop b3. Oh, would I, would nice. I, would it's I a nice idea. It doesn't quite work yet, but okay. yeah, like, yes. it's very close very to working. Um, and yeah, I mean, somewhere before I would expect it to happen. Although, I mean, yeah, this is okay. But completely turned around in White's favor, by the way, because well, Black it just hasn't made any real progress in these last few moves. The knight is still on d8. The knight is still on g6. Like these are all pieces that need to be improved. Bishop is like no longer good. Um, and I totally like White because White has the open a file. All right, her pawn move is a little, eh, you know, questionable. Like she. She could have taken with the rook as well, but I understand she really wanted to keep her rook active. Um, and yeah, okay. It's not really a clear position at this point. If black takes on d5, we take back. We're going to get the e4 square for the knight. So it just seems very, uh, very unclear. But By the way, we have 90 this. minutes of yeah. 5 plus 1. Grandpa Simpson asks, an hour of 5 plus 1? No, we have another hour of 5 plus 1. Seems kind of exhausting, especially before a flurry of really fast games. Yes, this is a grueling format. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of chess players are used to playing many hours of Blitz. So yeah. it's tough, but it's also uh, part of the point. You know, this is a, a battle, a battle, a tough battle, and one that it looks like Costa Nuka is coming out ahead on here, as you pointed out. I mean, as soon as we saw those queens off the board, I was very worried for black because one thing about the Ray Lopez is that a lot of times we do get some of that activity in the middle game. And this end game just looks gorgeous. Bishop B4 just played though. And is that yeah. trapped? No, Rook we... is trapped. So she's got to yeah, get it out like that. So I guess on knight takes, she's going to take on E1 and material is still going to be Oh, wait, what did she do? Uh, maybe oh. I would have taken on b4. Hmm. But anyway, she the, took uh, like that. All right. So, okay, things are not so bad for Black. Like, they're kind of getting better than they were. Um, you know, it's nice that they got rid of that, like, strong bishop that was on that diagonal. And, yeah. and this little move, yeah. Yeah. This little sneaky move, knight takes f3, pawn takes f3, check would allow, and if king f1. Um... Yeah, nice checkmate, right? <laughs> like, it's pretty nice check. Oh, no, it's not a checkmate. No, it's not. You have it way out. Although, yeah, block is, of course. Uh... Okay here after rook d3. Was there anything else there? No, or is it just this? Yeah, I don't think there was. I don't think no. there was a win here. And what just happened? I think she actually, did she go for this? No. Um... 
Was... No, she just played King F1 right away, which certainly yeah. makes sense as well. Mm. And now okay. well, Antoinette is surviving. Yeah, although there is that very strong D pawn. But we didn't have time to take on a4. That's the problem for white, you know? Yep. So that gives black the counterplay with the a pawn. I was hoping for Antoinette, for Alexandra's sake, she could take on a4 and have the d pawn, but she only gets one. So now she's basically playing against the fact that the knight on d8 is, is terrible, which is yep. true. It's dominated, right, Irina? I mean, it can't move anywhere. It's yep. really messing up um, our position as black. So how does yeah. Stepanova deal with that? I, I mean, I think that even though um, the bar is saying this is equal, that's that's a really annoying problem to face in a blitz game. I agree. I agree. I mean, I think she has to go like a three here just to get that pawn protected. And how does white improve, right? Because the problem is if she ever moves this pawn, then the knight gets to come out. So she can't really push the D pawn. But, you know, she might go something like rook a one, but then she's got to consider maybe rook e eight ideas yeah the knight on d8 is of course like the whole reason that white is playing on here and uh but you know alexandra has a nice uh i mean antoinetta has a nice little time advantage as they go into like this critical stage so like those 20 seconds might prove useful and oh wow they've made some more moves so a3 rook a1 f5 knight c5 all right Nice. Okay, well, now she has that square for the knight, finally, f7. That's a huge boon for, for Antoinetta. Um, yeah. But look at that, knight e6. Okay, that looks worrisome on one hand. Um, but what does black do now? Rook b2 check and a2 creep, creep a little closer, perhaps? Yeah, that's, that's definitely possible. And she can also go like, you know, if she wants to stop rook a7, then she can go like rook a8 at some point, right? So she can go check. And then rook a8, and then a2, rook b1. I mean, white's gonna have some work cut out here. So she needs, oh, did she do it? Did she play rook a8 right away? King d2, a2, king c2. Okay, now it just looks really good for black. I mean, she just won a pawn. Her a2 pawn is really strong. And oh, yeah, really strong. Uh, a princess there for sure. Rook to. Uh... Work to F3 check also if you want to pick up some more some more pawns for the road. Can't yeah. figure out what to do. Stefana though with less than 15 seconds. That is always dicey. You know, yeah, there's the one can, second increment, but can she go rook a6 or is there like you know rook takes a f7 and d7? There actually are some sneaky tactics. Yeah, like yeah good there. point. I think keep that rook on a8 for now is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they've made like, they're making moves. And she did just yeah. take that pawn. I like that. I like that. Just take the pawn off. Because the more pawns you take, even if you lose a piece, Ooh, you'll... she just ah, got a big there fork. there it is, the fork. <laughs> got a big fork. And, okay, she's winning now. The one second increment for Antoinetta should be enough to win, which means that she's going to go up in the match. That was surprising. A big turnaround Ooh, a second there. fork, Jen. Look at that. Antoinetta just uh, finding those forks. And, uh, all right. Oh, she didn't. Okay, she didn't want to take the rook. Well, because there was king d seven. Sure, yeah. but now she's got a double attack in, in a very unusual way, and probably yeah. a checkmate threat as well with rook to, <laughs> to b eight. And un well, not right oh, away. Yeah, but yeah you're rook right. Three. Rook b eight and rook e three is yeah, that rook, a yeah. checkmate or rook e three, three right away, and then rook b eight. So similar yeah. ideas, yeah, but then there's king c seven. But anyway, black has won the game. Antoinette takes a lead in the match. You see. No smile there. There's a match, a lot of match left. So they're um, maintaining all of their energy, not showing any emotion. Yeah, I mean, so far, um, well, I think it's been a very close match. Yeah, definitely some opportunities have been left on, on the table. I think Alexandra needs to um, improve her play a little bit in, against this like deferred Steinitz and like start putting that pawn on D5 and going for those positions because um yeah Antoinette has been just getting very good positions like that as black and uh, you know it's a little too much uh yeah maybe try something yeah. different you know like just just uh until the break you know maybe just switch it up in fact I wouldn't be surprised if in Alexandra's next wife she just like try something different because it's also exhausting it's an exhausting opening to play it's so rich to play these games in blitz, it's very tiring, especially when you're white and you're supposed to be getting something. If you're if you're that tired, you're supposed to be getting a good position, you know? So yeah. 
This one, it turned out a lot differently, Irina. Remember last game, Alexandra actually lost that bishop on c6. This time she traded it. So that is much better as it's a really key piece in white's position. Yeah, um, but I'm not a fan gotten... of that queen on c8, Jen, you know? You don't like that? No, well, I don't know. That yeah. feels like really passive and like, I mean, yeah, because Antoinette is again getting a good position with like very simple moves like e4, right? Like it's pretty much the idea she did in the other game. Except the difference is like, yeah, there are no light square bishops anymore, but it's still a good plan. And it just feels so much easier for white to play like bishop e3 right here. Uh, you know, rook c1. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. e5. Okay, sure. You can do that. Bishop f4 maybe now to support the pawn. And then rook c1, knight e4. Um, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't like that move as much, but I guess you can do it. Like bishop e3 and then rook ac1 still makes sense. You just don't love how the uh, the king is a little airy now? Yep. Yeah, I don't like that. That, that diagonal, I feel like that's the kind of thing that can backfire. Um, all right, now she has a big decision to make. Now she trades queen, she lets the knight in. I don't think you want to do that. So I'm, I guess we're going to see queen f2, but this is exactly what I mean. Like, you know, you're, you've given black a bit of this time. And what, what does your pawn in f4 really give you, right? Other than like a weaker king. I mean, yes, if you get to play f5, maybe. Oh, I like this though. I like that she yeah. didn't give the c4 square. So she, it's funny because we were thinking of like two options, like trade queens or move the queen. And but there's a third option. Yeah. Neither. Let let them take it, but slightly better situation because the knight didn't get into c4. Yeah, but I mean, I mean d5 is a really good square too. So um, I I don't think that uh, black has to complain about that square. The problem is this. This is a very very classic Ooh. case of the okay, terrible knight. terrible idea there, Jen. Look at this one. Oh trading yeah, the knights, trading the knights to help the knight on c7 land on the outpost. Here's the thing, Jen. Okay, like the knight on c7 is black's worst piece, and when we have a situation here called, you know, the like knights are basically doubling each other. Yeah, it's not actually a very good thing. It seems like you know the knight doesn't need like a hundred pieces protecting it; already has the pawn. And so the problem with this move that Antoinette made, and she has a space advantage, right? And so like she's trading pieces, which unfortunately is not what you want to do when you have a space advantage and really helps black out with like letting the knight get there. Absolutely. It's called the superfluous knight by the famous late trainer Dovoretsky. And honestly, I think that might've been one of the best examples of it I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it was just yeah. so clear, so yeah. clear. Because the knight on c7 is so terrible because it's also the pressure on, from the, the rook on the c file. So knight c3, a strategic mistake, but let's catch up to the main game because according to the uh, analysis bar, white is better again. I think maybe it has something to do with that pawn on a7. Maybe there's something with, um, no, I don't know. Is there a little tactic here for white? No, I think knight b5. I would play it had... probably like king e4, g4. Like maybe start with g4. Okay, so she goes for uh, f5. Yeah, okay, no, this is this is a good move, though, because you're destabilizing the knight. If they take, you're destabilizing the knight on d5. And meanwhile, because of that pawn on e5, it's basically impossible to defend e6 in an organic way. So yeah. I guess you have to take on f5. Yeah. That's really not what you want. Yep. Good move by Stefanova. No, she still kept Alexandra under pressure despite that uh, helping her out by trading the knights. Yeah. I mean, f5, really nice move. What should uh, Kustinuk have done? Oh, maybe she should have played a move like g6 on the previous move. Of course, you know, uh, uh, Antoinette could have still played g4, but. King F8 turned out to be a lot worse than anticipated. Yeah, I love this. Middle game ideas in the end game. And yeah, that's uh, that's something that sometimes it's hard to see, but you know, at Antoinette is still attacking in the end game. <laughs> love to see it. And now it is um, Alexandra thinking still in this position. So she's been in some deep thought, huh? Yeah, I mean, she really doesn't want to have to take, but I don't think she has any choice, right? I mean, otherwise yeah, you'd have to give up this pawn. Knight c7 again? Can we bring our knight back to c7? Hmm. Okay, but that's interesting. It looks it looks vulnerable, but maybe that is what she is contemplating here. Knight c7. Yeah. I just didn't like how you could just attack the knight and it's already difficult for me to defend it. Like you could just yeah. maybe move your rook to c1. Yeah, let me give you an example, Jen, of what can happen here. Like, unfortunately, yeah. well... Let me see. There's, I, I really want to make some tactic work with like rook c7. How do totally. I do yeah, I feel, I feel what you're feeling. Absolutely. But I, I mean, yeah. there could be even just more 
more direct ideas as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice one. Knight c6 looks devastating. You can't take it. And if I take the b7 pawn, you're going to be crying. Yeah. So, okay, that's why knight c7 is not good. But you can understand why Alexandra felt compelled to at least examine every option here. Because this is no fun. Yeah, I mean, we were expecting like rook b d3, I guess. And like rook trying to come into d7. But her, I think her reaction, Sandra, it was, you know, was a good reaction in a difficult position. She just like protected the a7 pawn from capture. And on rook here, well, you know, she'll have to go like knight b4 and hope that after, you know, rook d7, she can find some sort of move there. It's not going to be easy, but um, that's probably what we're going to see on the board. Yeah, it happened. Rook b d3, knight b4, rook d7, and she went to c6. Okay, there you go. So she found that move. Uh, holding things, holding things together for now. I guess after knight takes e7, you gotta trade the rooks and take. And I just went a pawn. I don't know. It does look pretty tempting. Yeah, totally. Knight e7. You gotta trade rooks and play knight takes e7. Allow rook takes a7. And I guess what is the idea there? There's a knight c6 forking yeah. the um the rook and the pawn at the end of the variation. What a brilliant defensive play by Ghost and Yuki. And this is the thing, like some of these positions, she's getting bad positions in um, and she's always fighting back. Love love this. Uh, wait, wait, what's going on here? Yeah, I'm just oh. showing the line. Yeah, showing okay. the line that that was her idea. And that is why Antoinetta played the move king e4. She saw that and she also saw that her pawn was hanging. Um, by the way, oh yeah, I guess another thing that we just kind of blundered is if- Oh yeah, 95. 95, yeah, that's yeah, kind so of you important. Just... So you can't do that at all. Got it. Got yeah. it. So she had to just play king e4 here. And then after king f8, rook c7. Wow. Attacking the knight on c6 and preparing to double up with rook d7. But is there some tactics here with um, knight e5 or bishop yeah, f6? Yeah, it's very tempting, but I yeah. think white like takes. I think white just takes yeah. probably, probably, although I have no idea because like, you're gonna you're gonna have like some knight g4 move it's actually not all that clear then there's knight e6 but there's knight takes f2 with a check yeah so think, yeah that that king on e4 ends up becoming misplaced but i think this is a, yeah, a big option for her she went for bishop f6 okay hopefully she's winning the knight i think she is because there's g5. Ah, g5 check and then after king g4 there's h5 check giving up a pawn but but winning that knight on f5 which is key to just restore the material balance nice it looks like she just completely got out of this tough situation jen and uh that's amazing i mean she's still she's in the time time situation is tough but her position has gotten uh a lot better since uh you know since, as the game has been progressing so really nice defense by alexandra in a difficult position fantastic you know she used her time and she found the right move so that's what you need to do in blitz. And now who's better? I I, I can't tell because the, you would think that the white with the king on, on g4 would be a good thing. Uh, yeah. I think white's better. Yeah. Bar well, says look, even. Look, look, John, there's a possible checkmate there with g4. Ah, beautiful mate. Love it. Rookie four, king h5, g4 mate. Of course, after rookie four check, we would be compelled to play king h3 instead or f3. Yeah. He chose f3. So here we are. I mean, the position is... Oh, well, okay, I guess white is winning the pawn. So I guess that is good news for white. She's just gonna grab that pawn. She still has a time advantage. Well, okay, now we have to give the preference to white. Well, we also have, have rook coming to d7, right? I mean, that seems yeah. very dangerous for you. Huh. She, she plays king g2, get her king completely out of the way before she starts um, with her attack. Yeah, uh, I wonder if like black will at some point wanna play the move pawn to g4. I guess, what does white really want to do here? I don't know. To me, unless this move is a blunder, I would do something like that. Um, but I guess there is this. This must be like white's big idea. Although I'm not sure how much of an idea it is. Because uh, black can, you know, can go like things like that and like that and try to get counterplay against the bishop. All right. Like, oh, so she did go g4. There we go. She read my mind. Uh, rook a4. Oops. Uh, I, I was like, I knew this is a good move if I don't blunder the pawn, but. Mm. Okay. Okay. White is now still clearly better, but they're getting lower on time. 
Bishop c5, okay. Hmm. She just has to play fast and try to get some of her pawns going. But, like, how do you make a pass pawn here? That's how we win, right? And, and like, no. the, obviously, the g pawn's not easy to make a pass pawn. So we would need to get a4 in at some moment. That's so hard to arrange, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty hard to arrange, Jen. Yeah, I think, it, I mean, she has good chances of making a draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah. tricky, especially, but you got it. It's all about the time, really. At some point, they're going to be playing down to seconds. Yeah. Uh, but like, this, this is the thing. You don't need to make a pass pawn if you get your king into c6 and yeah. you win the b pawn. That's the way to make a pass pawn, make two Ooh, pass pawns. This move, like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't go for the Oh, rip no, game. yes, because you just take and take on a2, right? Yeah, well, she's still going to be better there because she's going to win b5. Yeah. But, okay, but her. Draw, but could be draw ish. Yeah, she didn't go for that. So black actually declined. And now I think black is not really not really doing anything super productive. And I think, yeah, that's it. I think now white has two extra pawns. Should be just moving them up the board pretty simply. Yeah. And she has more time now to nine seconds to Alexander's two four. Okay, so just Real keep push. moving. Yeah. Gotta Ooh. keep this moving. Um, I know we have a lot of fans of Alexander maybe, you, you know? screen in the chat, not happy about this particular game, but there's a lot of match in front of us. A lot of match in front of us. Beautifully played here yeah. by Stefanova. She's gonna take a huge 3-1 lead here in the match. Yeah, although you know, there's still still some play left because it's always tricky with these. Yeah with these pawns like i'm not a hundred percent sure no, you're right you're right i didn't realize we were going to lose a g pawn yeah there's actually like some some pretty cool chess.com endgame training and i know there's like one position where you're up like two pawns and it's yeah. actually pretty hard to win but I, especially now i guess i guess this king can go to b8 jen i think the king should go yeah. to b8 i think she found that yeah there because it doesn't go. matter if we lose the a pawn in this particular spot oh, wow. right? like wait wait this is like going to be a repetition or something I know. I mean, well, we need to use our rook to block and then get b7 in, right? Oh, oh. this is a draw now. No, now we lost the pawn. Now we lost the pawn, but you've got the rook behind it, and then it's going to be wow. rook take b7 and a draw. Wow. And this is the wow. first emotion we've seen from Stefanovo because she's so disappointed to draw that game. You never call in until it's actually won, and you know that was my error. And I think also Stefanova with that show of emotion was was also feeling like wow. hey, I thought I had already won that game. I thought she was about to resign. Oh yeah, that was that was quite the save by Alexandra from like a totally hopeless position. Wow. And we've got oh. the, the chat is going wild. Goddess of chess says Archon and B. What a save, good God. We, of course yeah. we have a lot of chess queen vans in the chat. Yeah. Way to go, Kostin Yuke says Ray Blanco. But Stefana is still with the lead here. Two and a half to one and a half. All right. Now, so now she's changing her opening up uh, Alexandra as white. She's no longer going for Bishop B5. She's going for the Italian game. Smart. Mm -hmm. Smart. She wasn't getting good positions there. And you know the Italian, you're, you know, this is a nice, nice aggressive line here. Yeah, she's going for like, I guess she's going to go for like knight takes E4, D5. It's like a, a pawn sack line that has become really popular recently with like a lot of a, a aggressive aggressive lines where white i think you know even castles like queen side sometimes and goes like h4 um yeah so there have been some good players going into this and so stefanova she's thinking yeah so i, I predict this d5 move yeah and i now there's like okay there's knight e7 right or does she take first i think she can move the knight away First. This isn't a good sign that Stefanova is thinking right away from the opening. And Alexandra still has her full five minutes. Right. Yeah, that's right. She's already spent a minute, you know, just on these first few theoretical moves. Um, so we're going to see. We're going to see what she comes up with. I guess now she has to trade. There's not much choice. Oh, wow. Interesting. I guess there is a choice. And what will Alexandra do here well she's not definitely doesn't want to trade the queens that part we know um if bishop e2 there's knight e5 that's a good square for the knight so king f1 yeah king f1 is interesting because there's no knight e5 because now i can take your bishop and then take your knight we have got 40 minutes remaining in the 
five minute plus one second increment portion of this match. Whoa, what just happened here? The bar yeah. is saying that uh, Alex is just totally winning. So what yeah, do we, we need do? to figure out some way to get this rook to e1, right? So like, how do we do that? What is the way to do that? I suppose one sort of prosaic move. A3? Like, yeah, oh. A oh, she moved her bishop away. Yeah, I guess. I think a3 I was good more. because if you play bishop d2, queen d2, I'm attacking your knight and threatening rook e1. Yeah. So that would be like a double attack, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose. I, oh, the only problem with that, though, is that I have knight c4. Oh, knight c4. Right, right. And then um, I don't have time. Yeah, so that doesn't quite work. I'd have yeah. to take the knight instead, and that would be, like, less exciting. Yeah. Uh, but there had to be some immediate win, huh? Yeah, there was. Maybe and, something with d6? Was yeah. d6 the thing? D6. And I guess on queen d6, queen e1, that's sneaky. Ah, uh -huh, nice. And then pawn takes d6, of course, or his bishop takes b4. And if bishop takes d6, um, well, even though you do hang on c4, uh, if, if, yeah, if bishop takes d6 or bishop a5. So probably she would have had to try the pawn takes d6, bishop b4, knight c4 line, but. Mm, yeah, that's. Yeah. That one looking suspicious, right? Like, yes, because of something like queen d5 or queen yeah. d4, yeah. yeah. Wow, so very nice good. idea, though, there, d6. Yeah, d6 Juicy. is beautiful. It is a beautiful move. But uh, she played bishop d3, which is, um, you know, fine. I guess there's no d6 at the moment, so black still can't really develop very comfortably, so it still looks really good. Um, yeah. Oh, we are getting some action. The Greek gift sacrifice, Jen. Oh, there we go. There we have it. Bishop h7, knight d5, check. So if king nice, d8, queen nice. h5 will threaten checkmate in one, and it'll be very difficult to prevent because the queen on e7 would stop any kind of escape square. So instead, wow. queen d6 into the fray. Now, queen g4, normally we have some kind of knight participating in the defensive operation here. Here we don't. F5, Irina, uh, what's the move there after F5? Queen G3? Oh, after F5, what can we do? Uh, queen G3 is one. Or do we play Queen H4 and just thread in? I guess we all, uh, do we have like, do we have Bishop B4 at all? Hmm. Uh, maybe Bishop B4, pawn takes, Bishop takes. I don't know what that is. Rookie eight, that probably looks good for black. So I don't know. F5, um, we have queen h4 or queen g3, right? So two very tempting moves there. But if queen h4, bishop takes d2, queen h7 doesn't really seem to work. Yeah. So probably f5, queen g3, unless we just play queen takes b4, but then yeah. the g5 pawn, the g5 knight hangs in the end. So the issue right? is that they always have this move. Yeah. Right? That we, that we, like the, the thing is usually in these positions, there's a black queen on d8, so you have like a winning discovery, or here you don't, right, because of that improved position of the queen so you have all these discoveries but literally nothing useful like uh their bishop might even go back to g5 after a discovery so maybe we just have to take on b4 with the queen after f5 but then yeah. um notice that a5 hangs at the end of the line as well and i think white ends up a, up, a, up a pawn right it's very complicated because g5 is hanging so i really have no idea like what what is going on here like yeah, you take, I guess I guess you're taking on c7 and then like you're up a pawn. So actually, yeah, that is the best that White has after f5. It's a pretty nice line. They're up a pawn, not necessarily gonna win because you know his bishops of opposite color, and it's really not that big of a deal being down like an h pawn. Uh, but let's see what she came up with. So she actually did play f5, right? She played f5 and um queen takes b4, I think happened. Take stake. So we saw all of that. Wow. And so she decides, Stefanova. Whoa, what did she decide? Well, she played rookie eight. Like you. Oh, yeah, she did, but she oh, did we, not take the, the knight, position. Jen. What? She, did not, she didn't take the knight on g5. She just literally let white have an extra piece. Oh, no. She played b6, forgetting about bishop d2 or something. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I mean, she oh. tried to save the pawn. She like literally. Forgot to capture back the knight. It's like a hallucination, I think. Or maybe she yeah. actually, maybe she thought this bishop e6 and rook e2. Maybe she missed something here. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I I feel like she must have missed bishop d2. I kind of didn't see her expression. No, I don't. I think, she was, I think she was Wait. pretty poker face. The only time I saw emotion was at the end of that last game. 
Yeah, I didn't get that at all. Um, you know, but okay, you know, of course, blunders are a part of, you know, of Blitz Chess. Uh, that's uh, that's, that's really an that. understatement. <laughs> yeah. I would say they are Blitz Chess. <laughs> what is Blitz Chess without blunders? Yeah, so now Alexandra's playing Blitz. <laughs> she's got a chance to even the match. And I think that's what we're going to see. I mean, she has, well, how many pawns does, uh, Antoinette half. She has only one pawn for the piece. Now it's even less than that. Yeah. So this is pretty winning. Yeah, this is a nice one. But hey, you know, we as we've seen in this match so far, you gotta wait until the game is over to call it. As um, both ladies will continue to make it as difficult as possible. Rookie four looking at Rook G four to drum up a little counterplay. Yeah, and, and the chat is asking, uh, you know, where is the Candidates Tournament? Yes, guys, it is a rest day at the Candidates. It's really easy uh, to keep track of the schedule. I'm going to give you a little secret. They play three games and then they rest, right? Three games and rest, um, and that just goes until the very end of the tournament. So, you know, we're done with three rounds. This is their first rest day. Um, and we will be back tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, Jen, are we going to see each other tomorrow again? Yes. Yes. On GM Garo's channel. Absolutely. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. You want to watch Hikaru says Parija Kumar. Well, you can watch Hikaru on Hikaru's channel, uh, tomorrow when Jen, I will be commentating on the fourth round of the candidates and see if, you know, yesterday, uh, was quite a, Peaceful day at the candidates. Yeah, Jen, four draws. I think it's going to be much more fiery tomorrow, right? We've got Report versus uh, Hikaru, right? That's going to be a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be good. A Report, I mean, you can always count on him to make things interesting. And I think Hikaru is, uh, is also going to be up for it. So, I mean, I have to say, like, uh, well, I guess Black is still completely losing. Yeah, but she's... She's been defending this for a while. Yeah. GM All right, what do we have here? We're still defending old, this. Please. What does that mean? Like when you say don't get old, do you want me to like mummify myself so that I, I no longer age or what? Just tell me what that means. I really want you to define it, please. I think he, I think he's saying we need to, yeah. I mean, we create uh, immortality. Great idea. Yeah, fantastic and I idea. I'm very that. much into. I'm very much into actually like anti aging things uh, at this at this stage. Like you know, um, just reading. Actually, I ordered a lot of books on the subject because it's pretty much like you know, it's a very exciting field, uh, exciting time in this field. Um, you know, they're just discovering like you know the kind of secrets to uh, being healthier for longer. Uh, and what I realized, Jen, it's basically like eat less, eat less and less often. It's like one really big secret in that, uh, for that. Yeah, I've heard about that, but, yeah, but you got to ask made, yourself, is, is life worth living if you don't get to eat a lot? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, you got to retrain yourself, basically, is the idea. I mean, the idea that you actually... Oh, I got, a, I got a visitor. I got somebody who really loves our commentary. <laughs> Um, yes, no, that's, that's, that, there's a lot, it's true. There's, a, I've, I've read some of the, those things as well. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of interesting, uh, science going on. Do you, earlier yeah. you mentioned Twitter, Irina. Yeah. We still oh, need yeah. to find out about your Twitter handle. Sure. I'm gonna, I'll tell you, Jen, like, I'm even going to give you a little secret. Like what, if you are interested in anti-aging research, one guy you can follow on Twitter is a researcher from, uh, from Harvard university named david sinclair and he also wrote a book about this and uh tries out all these things on himself so yeah that's one of the guys i, I know about. i know about david sinclair i think he actually might play a little poker as well oh interesting um, and we've got yeah we've got some comments here in the chat um who will win the olympiad from chess to anti-aging works for rats but i love brats whoa what works for rats <laughs> but i love brats nice it's true they're talking about how a lot of experiments are done on on mice and rats and yeah meat. yeah yeah oh by the way speaking of of time and the passage of it that we we're trying to freeze in many cases hey there's a picture from us playing when we were um uh in and i think when you won your first u.s women's championship in 1998 was it from so a nice little throwback photo oh, here nice. 
Yeah. Um, you're wearing, I remember you were you used to love that jacket. I know, right? The sports jacket, the, the Fila uh, jacket. That, you know, I think my dad got me that outfit, that like track, track suit outfit that I wore for years. Yeah. Chess Lover says, growing old is beautiful. GM Crash, you're so, oh, oh, yes, yes. I have a <laughs> comment that's going to get nuked. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I gotta wait, I gotta give that delay. All right, so here we've got a position um, that we haven't seen yet in the match, right? Between Kostinuk and Stefanova. So it started out as the Catalan again, but it's much more closed than most of the positions we've been seeing in this opening. Yes, that's right. They haven't had anything in this structure just yet. So Stefanova playing white, D4. We had a Queens Indian, actually interesting for the first time in the match, but a Queens Indian, so Alexandra, is the one who changed things up. And um, yeah, a good, good sign. I mean, a good idea from her because she, you know, Alexandra has struggled with the openings actually in this match. It's gotta be said. I don't know if she's had a single like sort of good position from the opening. Um, this position seems by the way, also like worse, <laughs> you know? Um, and why is it worse? Well, because the bishop on b7 is not great, right? It really doesn't do much. White has a bit of a space advantage. White has like an obvious plan with b4 at some point. Um, you know, even I would say even knight, like knight d3 here seems like a move, like very simple. Like I would imagine that you're at least, you know, a little bit better if you go like with bishop b4. Uh, but yeah, she went for b4, it makes sense. And now I suppose bishop d two oh bishop a1 okay so she stayed staring into that pawn well we'll see how that works out that's a little uh suboptimal gen i think yeah because now you all the things you were saying about the bishop on b7 become kind of more true for the bishop on a1 eh? yeah i don't like what stefanova has uh, done here but i like what alexandra has done i mean she split up the white pawns well, and now knight takes d5 ideas are in the air as well but there's a check right now so we can't do it right away but i'm just noting that the rook uh is putting pressure on the knight on c2 and the queen is a little overworked potentially on d3 so uh some tactic that might might end up materializing although i also think that black might consider the idea of, of re rerouting their bishop on c8 to f5 so Different options here. What do you think? There's queen a8, which was played, um, putting extra pressure on d5. So now there's three pieces attacking yeah. it and only two defending it. And, you know, rook to d1 might be required, but yeah. it looks a little passive. Yeah, it's hard to overstate how much I hate this bishop, Jen. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I have a visceral feeling about, you know, a bishop that is, staring into a pawn that he cannot take. And the only way to make that bishop better is if you play a four. I mean, if you play a four, you know, we can uh, sort of revisit that issue. Um, but it's a little tricky to play a four, you know, since it also gives you like, well, it loses a pawn uh, at this moment. But I think, you know, white, yeah. White Queen a four is also, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I, a four, it just feels like black, black's got everything going for her right now. Hmm. Also, Bishop, I, I like the idea yeah. of getting queen a4 in, and suddenly it's very difficult to defend the knight on c2 because rook c1 isn't an option, right? Like, for example, okay, bishop e4, um, well, that seems possible, I would say. Attacking that pawn, yeah, very logical. And, okay, now what? What do we do? I, h4 is a nice move because it basically makes the black bishop uh, go back for free. It's probably going to go back to d8. Um, yes. And then maybe we just go and like protect this pawn. We need, we do need to hold D5. That's an well, Yeah. Then you have knight E3 though, as well. So without the bishop on E3, we're, we're able to bring that knight into the game, which is huge because it's yeah. a good defender, but it can also become a good attacker. Oh yeah. That is a great point, Jen. I mean, <laughs> actually, once the knight gets there, I start liking white's position, you know, white is up a pawn and, uh, he just holds on to it. Yeah, so he, she needs to find h4, but I guess on h4, there is some bishop d5 business, you know, because if you take, I could take with the queen, and then the knight hangs on c2 in the end. So, like, for example, on h4, what is going on here? I mean, because it looks like white just wins after bishop h7, but the problem is it actually gets pretty crazy because there's e4, right? And then suddenly it's like everything 
um, is hanging. Although I guess queen d4 threatening checkmate still works out for white. So white, yeah, like white wins here. So what is the idea in this position? I guess there's bishop c4. It is uh, really sharp. And now what did she do? Okay. Oh, all of this, is, I think, is happening. H4 on the board. Bishop takes d5. Trade. Mm. Well, in that case, I kind of like it for black. Got a massive series of exchanges here. The bishop on a1 is still bad, right? Yeah, that is a very unfortunate piece. I mean, it's like actually such a bad piece that you, I mean, well, I don't even know what to suggest here. Like, I understand the bar is maybe not completely losing for white, but I really don't like white's position. Yeah. Well, we have to be the problem with playing this as white is like you probably have to come up with the exact right concrete way to get pat counterplay, which is like really difficult to figure out in blitz. Like, is it to play something with f4? Is it to play something with rook c1? Is it to play something with like rook d1 and b6? I don't know, but black moves are way easier to find. Like way easier to find. And yeah. you know, I already mean, we see that like it was equal a move ago. There was some liquidating idea that was okay for white, but of, of course it's a blitz game. It's not easy to find. And rook yeah. d3 instead. Oh yeah, it's actually, so the idea was like rook d1 attacking the knight. And then trying to go for F4, opening the bishop, right? So yeah. <laughs> funny like that. But, you know, essentially white is probably going to lose this game because of that bishop. And there's also this idea coming in that your rook will never be able to move. It's just, it's just quite miserable. Knight B6, I guess. Oh, maybe knight F6. I mean, you might want to go to the king side as well. Yeah, but... I think, you know, knight f6, she has to worry about well, b6, but okay, then you just take Yeah, it. because of bishop on a1, again, your favorite piece. We, we yeah. don't even have those tactics. I know, um, that guy. Yeah, not 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 fun at all. Mm, she just played king f7. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. She king f7, but you know what, though? The bishop on a1 is so problematic. It's this kamikaze itself. Yeah. This happened. Bishop takes e5. Oh, wow. King f7 was a huge Smart. blunder. Huge blunder. Allowing white that tactic. I mean, that. You can't keep your, can't take your eye off the ball in this match. As both players are very sharp, especially when it comes to coming back into the game. Isn't yeah. It's funny how that is, right? I mean, wow. that's crazy. Like, that was such a big tactic. I mean, white has very little time, but her position has gotten like a lot better than it was before. Her bishop well, than it was before, life. but it's still very tricky, right? Yeah. Um, that knight and the rooks are are really well placed. It still feels like a position that's a little harder for white to play. I um, agree. Rook I agree. And also, well, I mean, probably position wise, it's totally fine. But uh, wait, what just happened? What so just we've got happened? two pass pawns for both players. Two pass pawns for both players, but um black has the knight and white has the bishop which which piece do you take here i mean it's blitz so i'm tempted to just go with the cliche and take the knight yeah yeah uh so king b7 or d1 okay she protects it everything um yeah i mean it's still easier black has good centralization black has a really nice knight a nice rook like Everything's holding together, although the one thing that Black is not doing is, like, pushing their pawns. But it's a little hard to push your pawns as well because then you risk, like, letting the knight in. Um, so she plays here. Okay, 97. Uh, what should we do? Should we trade and go g4? Okay, she went for this. Her bishop is, again, becoming kind of like a problem in this position with rook d5 as a threat. Bishop f6. Okay, so... I do think that white would like to get this pawn going. Yeah, let's do it. Got to get it going. And you're right. That gives yeah. us a little head start that your knight on f5 is kicked. Mm. So you're going to stick it on g5. It's good for white. I mean, it's good for black, by the way, that at least that queening square um, of the g pawn is not a dark square. That's helpful for our defensive possibilities. Knight e4, bishop on d8. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what? Because attack c7 right now. Rook takes c7 is a threat. Got to do something about that. King B. We got a few more moves, it looks like. Okay. King Live game. B6. All right. Whoa. G yeah, they're going real fast now. Uh -oh. G7 is on the board. Ooh. 
catch uh-huh. up with them. Oh yeah. Was there G7 winning, John? I think this might have just been winning because there's Rook H8 and you just Oh, and look at this. We have a Rook takes F2 on the board right now. And what, right. what on earth is going on? Okay. Uh Rook well. H- Rook F6, I suppose. Um, Rook F6 was played, yes. Yes. You know, the rook on g8 is trapped. Oh no, rook takes f8, just wins the bishop. Oh, the pin. Oh boy. Wow. And Black wins, tying the score up, and Stefanova again shows her dismay in this reality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at the time difference. I mean, that's really what did Antoinette in, right? So. What is going on now? Oh, Castanuk has taken the lead by a point. All oh, right. I was wrong. Yes, I, I thought that she was just even up, but no, she's actually up a point now. It was the last game round that she evened the score in, and we're in another Italian game. That went so well for her last time, remember? Although this is a slow Italian game. So last time she went into the kind of sacrificial open games, and yeah. here we have a more like standard type of an Italian that has a lot of similarities with Roy Lopez ideas. Yeah, no, so... What can I say? The, the chess is very close. I think there is some advantage with Alexander being just a faster player in general. You know, not uh, it's not overwhelming and it's not in every game, but like where she's gotten her points has been pretty much in these like random time scrambles at the end. She just shows her her blitz experience, um, you know, to be stronger. So, yeah, but it's still a very close match. Oh, yeah, it's going to be really close. And here we have a very exciting Joe Copiano, by the way. I mentioned that it might turn into some kind of like similar ideas for Ray Lopez, but Antoinette is playing extremely aggressively with this early G5, um, looking to um, try to try to get some uh, very exciting play in here, potentially with like H5 and H4. Yeah, it reminds me of Caruana's game from like a couple of days ago. Who did he play this way against? Um... So knight f1 has been played, by the way, and h5 is on the board. h4 is the threat. So we got to play h4 or h3 ourselves. h4, uh, the quick choice of Kostanyuk. And let's see in the chat. Chess queen is going brr, they say. Brr? Alexander Kostanyuk. I don't know. Is he called? They're, co- they're, co- uh, they're confusing it with the Federal Reserve. <laughs> It's Nepo, not, it's Nepomniche versus Carolina. They're mentioning that game that you mentioned. Uh, oh, that's Nepo. That is great. Thank you, guys. I was literally like looking up and this is the ceiling, like trying to figure this out for so long, who he did this against. You're absolutely right. It was Nepo. Thank you. Uh, thank you for um, reminding me. Um, and that is exactly what, yeah, Caruana did. It was like this queen on F6 and like kingside pawn push. It was like very, very, was very reminiscent of that. Um, so what can we say about this position, Jen? Um, I don't really see Black's attack at the moment. Things are sort of stable on the king side for white. White's making some progress on the queen side. Although, yeah, although knight of six is come, knight of four is coming and it's a little uncomfortable, that move. Hmm. I would say so, because then we're going to be threatening bishop e3 and knight g2. I suppose you're going to have to castle, but you can't castle yet because you hang that pawn. Uh, you know, practically speaking, I would say it's actually easier to play as as uh, as black now. I, I think notwithstanding, like, whatever the computer bar is showing, it actually just feels easier as black. One little problem is the knight on h7, right, which is not great. Look at this move, though, by Alexander. She just played the move queen b1. What a very interesting move. Reminds me of being a queen eight, B8 to A7 against uh, Duda. This time I remember who he played that against. Yeah, this is a very nice move. B6 and being introduced into the position potentially with the idea that you're uh, killing that gorgeous bishop. Yeah, very interesting move. But not necessarily because you also might want to keep the juice of the... Uh, of the pressure with this bay pawn um, on c6 and a6. So th- that's the, the, the yeah. reason we like the move. Ooh, Jen, I have a cool idea. Flexibility. Well, yeah, although my cool idea doesn't work. Like I was what gonna were you say, thinking? Yeah, I was going to say, look at my idea. Takes, takes, and like, like, uh, like as an example, like let's say you just make a random move. I was like, I was wondering if we could like go there and like trap the rook. And then I was like, no, but the rook is not trapped, unfortunately. Yeah. 
all right let's not uh I like that idea though yeah, yeah, but that's the thing that bitch 187 is so strong speaking of castling black has castled okay nice protecting nice. protecting f7 you know that's something we, we teach beginners yeah. you know castle so that f7 is protected and also it introduces into the position a lot of ideas with taking on b5 before taking on b5 would always leave us vulnerable to a check on b5 whereas now a takes b5 seems like a threat right because at the end of the variation, we have bishop e3, potentially, um, and your rook on a1 is hanging with check. So that's why Kostin Yukas really played rook b1 herself. And now we see bishop c5 quickly by Antoinetta, which, um, you know, stops uh, Alex from playing b6 and killing her bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still a really complicated position strategically. That's for sure. How, how, like, white can't castle... And this move is always hanging in the air. On the other hand, um, and on the other hand, the computer bar likes white, but I feel that like it's a, it is still kind of mystifying to me what he likes about white so much. I mean, because what is white doing with this king? I mean, is the king going here? Is that even a, an option, Jenna? It seems a little crazy to try to do that to the king. Well, I love crazy people. Yeah. Okay. Well, not the king do one then, Jen. Let's do it. I mean, I mean, is it is it less crazy than castling and giving up h4? That's well, the question. Let's, well, I'll put it to you this way, Jen. This is not the worst king move in this game. Like, I think maybe that king f1 move that we saw in game one might have got, got gotten that um, prize. So, king. I mean, king I don't one, know, yeah. but I think didn't Costinha get up winning that <laughs> game in the end? Oh. I can't remember anymore. That was so long ago. But you got a good position at, at eventually. Ultimately, yeah, ultimately worked out. But like, I mean, I guess this is too much because, you know, Black will open the A file. Like you generally don't want to put your king anywhere near an open file. So of course, like that's not really uh, going to happen. So she played knight C2, showing that she would like to play D4, play against the bishop. I think that's we have a few more moves also. A takes b5, um, a takes b5, queen f6, um, knight f1 we have in the position now. So she's definitely not castling now. We can say that much as the knight's gone to f1. And now, as Antonetta, I'd be thinking, is it possible for me to slam open the position with your king in the center? Yeah, yeah like if I could get really d5 point. in, is yeah. sacrifice a pawn, sure. And then play knight f4 at the end? Yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense, Jen. Like, Black does need to seize the moment, right? Because, okay, like, White wants to, like, put the knight back here. And um, it can't, it's kind of similar to what was already on the board. I guess, like, there's some difference. Like, she's kind of maneuvered around her knights. Um, but, yeah, you do want to act quickly. And this move is super interesting. Basically, like, just a pawn sack. And after that, I mean, you have knight of four ideas. You just can develop. Um, I wonder if she's going to go for it. We will see. I mean, it's uh, so Antoinette again, one minute lower on the clock. And she is, let me see. I don't think she's yet made her move. Well, knight f4 immediately is tempting as well. And that is yeah. what she did. She did. So knight f4 with the same idea to play d5. But you're right. Of, of course, white, black quickly played knight e3, yeah. defending g2 um, and not taking on f4. Um, Bishop e6 quickly played by Antoinette, so that was her idea, actually, not to play d5. Yeah, it's all reasonable. I mean, you know, it's always hard to evaluate these pawn sacks. It's like, it seems obvious, you know, in hindsight, but, like, when you're playing, you know, giving up a pawn is not not so easy. Um, I suppose... D4 like, was played, by D5 the way. d5 is an idea, yeah, so she goes d4. D4 wow. on the board. Um, yeah, you okay. can't take it. You can't take twice because you're going to wind up losing your knight on f4. So I suppose, like, well, that's actually a question. I guess bishop a7 would be. We can throw in knight d3 check, but then I'd imagine king e2, and it doesn't really seem to do anything except leave our knight hanging, right? I guess, well, you can go back. Oh, yeah. I guess or you can maybe back. king d2. Maybe yeah, after knight d3, I should play yeah, king d2. Yeah, maybe king d2 even, right. Oh, but then after, this is really wild, isn't it? Okay, she's taken on d4 first, so that no longer allows knight d3 because you could have taken with the queen. Mm. So, um, okay, calm down, bishop e6. But what's going on now? Um, can Alex finally castle? Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is like, okay, I thought the bishop couldn't go there because there's some stuff happening to it. But I guess if you take, there's bishop a5, an important intermediate move, and uh, and then you can recapture on 
C6. So she is thinking now. Yeah, it's a wild position and the players have no time. But again, Alexandra with a minute more on the clock. I mean, that is, uh, we've seen that it makes a difference, right? It doesn't really matter how well Antoinetta plays because when it gets getting down to this uh, chaos at the end, uh, that minute extra that Castanuk has is going to be very, very critical. Now, can she castle? Because she is thinking at this point, castle or just take on e6 and then castle. I'm just obsessed with castling, Irene. I'm, it's still yeah. legal, right? We haven't moved yeah. our king and then moved it back to e1. We can still do it. Yeah, I guess on <laughs> castles, knight e2, your king can go to h2, and then it's pretty safe. I would say castle is a good idea, Jen, but she did Maybe take on e6 different. first to stop your knight e2 idea. She took on f4, allowing that intermediate move. Oh, no. I mean, oh, not... nice one by Stefanova immediately, not wasting any time. You've been talking about how much less time she has, but it's pretty close now. Wait, yeah. bishop a5 check? I don't see knight a move. Before, knight before, bishop takes Knight before, four. bishop c4. Okay. okay. So, I mean, it's uh, looking really, really unclear, but... I mean, black will, white will probably get to castle at some point soon, right? So Knight c4 has been played. Yeah, castles. So she finally puts it on the board. Queen f4, oh, that castles. What a good move. <laughs> I love to see. It's always a great move. Uh, catch up with the main five. position. Oh. Uh, queen c5. Okay, I don't know. Knight f6, maybe. So. Huh. Even even pawns right now, but the pawn on b7 is hanging. So is black going to be able to restore the balance? Yeah, this catch up with a very, live position. Very powerful, this knight on d6. Very powerful. Rook d8 played, kick it away, but it's a pretty good on f5 as well. But what's even better is that 15 second time advantage by Kostanuka. Yeah. She looks to get a two point edge here. I think she's going to yeah, do it. Irina. Yeah, yeah. She, it's very difficult to be in Stefanova's situation here. She just lost a pawn. She had like two, 2.7 seconds. It's only a one second increment. It's so hard to make your moves with just a one second increment. Yeah, uh -oh. let alone a move that's good and doesn't hang anything. It's very, very tough for sure. And they're doing a great job. But there it is, Rook C6 trying to get that B6 pawn, defend valiantly. Yeah, King F4 probably. OK, she went King G4. Now she's got no oh. time. And I think she might have even lost on time. Yeah. As Alexandra, the chess queen, a two point lead here, four and a half to two and a half. As Antoinetta will surely go for another one of those Catalans with only nine minutes left on the clock, Irina. So that means we might be in our last game. The way they've been playing. Yeah. Don't just usually. Playing. I mean, a just a little bit faster. You know, you can't, uh, you have to probably have a very good position against her in order to get that low on time. Like pretty much the game's got to be over, you know, I would say. Um, but the problem is that there's always some play left. And then Antoinette is like not able you know, to navigate it, understandably, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's it been, a, it been a tough streak for her in, in this uh, last part. Yeah, yeah, great play in the um, opening and middle game, but just very hard. And the those time scrambles, Kostin yeah. is just drawing in positions that she's losing and winning the ones that she's winning. And, you know, that's, that's what matters, and winning the ones that she's drawing. So all of those half points adding up to this two-point, Two point lead as uh, they're probably going to be in their last game here. Look at that comment in the chat, Jen. Women in chess are so intelligent. That's, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. What, a, what <laughs> yeah. an intelligent person here who said that comment. Who yeah. said that? You can't really argue with that, can you? I, yeah, I mean, I'm stumped. I'm stumped. Yeah, that's NL, NL Thrash. Women in chess are so intelligent. I love it. Of it, although I, I do, I think it's so important that everyone can play chess because sometimes, especially grown-up women, um, they're like, ah, I don't really think that way. Chess isn't for me. Chess is for everyone, and I feel like you're always comparing yourself against yourself. That's something that women are really good at, you know. Mm, you and know, um, someone says that I'm wearing nice cat shirt, Irina. Well, the problem is I'm not wearing a cat sh shirt. Uh, I'm actually wearing a wolf shirt. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's a nice little wolf shirt over here, guys. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. So. And NL, NL Thrash says that before watching this, I underestimated women in chess. as well. Stick with us. We got a lot of women's speed chess camps ahead of you this summer. And uh, yeah, you won't be underestimating women in chess if you watch these greats. 
We've got two women's world champions here, two of my favorites, Alexandra Kostinuk and Antoinette Stefanova. For anyone who's welcoming, I mean, who's just who's just joining the show, welcome. No candidates today, but some of the greatest women players in history facing off in blitz chess. I mean, you really can't beat that. Yeah. I agree. I, I was really looking forward to this match. You know, Jen, I mean, for me personally, like these are two players um, of my generation that I grew up playing with. I've played both of them a number of times. And so I just was really looking forward to this match. And, you know, they, have, you know, it's always nice to see players who've been like playing for decades. They're still, uh, still playing chess, still doing well. And, um, you know, there's kind of like a, a nice aspect to it, right? It's nice to watch the young up and coming players like we saw in the match versus Vaishali and Asobayeva. That's like the new generation, really good match. Um, but it's also just really nice to see the people that have been, uh, that have made, you know, their, uh, their lives into chess and, and have been around for decades. So paved the way yeah. and re created great lives for themselves out of chess. Antoinette, you know, Travel the world, you know, playing, having fun. Kostinuk became, you know, very famous through her successes in chess. I remember once when she was the uh, the vice world champion, her face was plastered on billboards and buses all over the city of Moscow. By the way, though, is Stefanova doing really well in this game? I feel like maybe she's, I, I was hoping, so she's just played the move knight g2. I was hoping that she was able to make her knight more aggressive than that. But I guess she's thinking of rerouting to e3 and f5, and it looks like it could end up being a really nice position for Stefanova. Yeah, um, so they had another simple... Queen Indian, and I'm sorry, we missed the whole game. They actually played pretty quickly to like trade off, like, yeah, so they... to get this far into the game. Yeah, they got into this position and um, knight g2, so knight d5. And the reason I just think Antoinette is better is because was well, not only, I mean, she's up a pawn, and that's one thing, but it also just seems on top of that that Black's king is is very shaky. Um, the biggest problem for white here is the rook on c1. So the knight, you know, could come to e3 potentially, but right now the knight is stopping it. And we just somehow need to get a little bit more pieces into the game to show our advantage. Uh, that knight on d5 is a beast because we can't move the rook on b1 easily to b1 because the knight takes c3, right? So yeah. how do we do something with our advantage? Yeah, this is a here? nice, this is a nice move. I hope she, she finds it, a4. Uh, uh, trying to like break up these pawns, right? Because yeah. yeah, like your your knight is not very good and your rook is not very good, and that's like the issue for white. But if you break up the pawns, you kind of get black tied down to defending c4. Um, that's the way to do it. And plus, you might be giving yourself like more potential open files for the rook. Um, so, I mean, given that she doesn't have a whole lot of other moves, yeah, there you go. She put it on the board because yeah, there weren't that many ideas. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's a forcey move. I mean, that's a thing. When you're starting out in chess, you, you say forcey moves or checks and captures. Then when you get a little better, I always tell my students, checkmate threats, add that to the pyramid. But when you're a grandmaster, one of the top women players of all time, a move like A4 is a forcey move because it threatens A takes B5. So of course it's going to be on your agenda, right? Yeah. It's not a move that you're going to miss. No way. Yeah. And, you know, black can't really go B4 because you're going to take it and open up the rook. Okay, whoa, this happened really fast. St Stefanova apparently had like a better move here, but I would say, yeah, I would say this is far from an obvious, an obvious move. Rook E1, like, I guess the idea is to get rid of their rook Ooh. so that you can like maybe give a queen A check so the black king is weaker. But let's catch up with the game yeah. because it's very exciting. I mean, it looks like it could even be tricky for for Hawaii. Uh, what do we have here? Knight e, I think we saw a knight e2 check, king mm. h2, and now queen back to e7. Um, look at that potential Anastasia make construction. But fortunately for white... Um, you can still do that and probably defend themselves because they'll probably have time to like move their knights e3, right? So she well, she just take, grabbed on b5. Yeah. She just grabbed on b5 because right now there are no checks. So after queen takes b5, c3, knight to e3. Yeah, knight e3 is great. We've been wanting that knight to improve for a long time. And so the knight holds c2 also is just, just great in the center. And also you're attacking the knight on e2. Right. So knight on e2, knight takes d4 was played. Queen c4 oh. check, knight e6, queen c3, all on the board. Oh, this is now totally winning. 
Yeah, well, he's just got that extra pawn, but it's not just any old extra pawn. It's the best pawn you can have, a beautiful A pawn poised to um, to, to coronate. But, you know, anything could happen. So let's see how Antoinette does this. She's got a minute and 40 on the clock. T times are very similar. So can she make this a one-point margin going into the three-minute? I think she can, but we know that Alexander is going to make it interesting somehow. We know. She's going to she's gonna kind of come up with some kind of idea to create maybe a perpetual or a threat here with G4. We're coming to F3. So you, she, she, you always got to watch out here as Antoinette. Yep. I agree, Jen. I mean, things are going as well as they possibly can for Antoinette. If I were her, I would just, like, push the pawn because... Uh, Black is not currently threatening anything, so just like bother her a little bit with that. I mean, I suppose you can go like King G1 He's or done something. It. There we go. He's A5. done it. And, and you see her, Kostin, you're actually going into a thing. She's trying to think, is there any way to make this exciting? Like, should I play for maybe G4 with Queen H5, Rook F3? Oh, is there even a threat there at the end of the day? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not, but you know, we got to do something. So she's, she has played G4. Yeah, so I guess a6 maybe keep... Oh, wait, no, no, king g1, right? Because you don't want to, like, accidentally blunder your knight. King g1 seems like a nice, solid move. I, I think, like, knight g5 might happen. I love her move that she played. Queen e5. Queen e5. Beautiful, nice, defense. Nice, nice, Beautiful nice. defensive move. I mean, it's, it's funny to, to, to describe a move like queen e5 as a defensive move, but it stops knight g5, it stops queen h5. H6 quickly played by Alexander is so tricky. Trying to say no, I insist on playing knight g5, and I've created a little hole for my king on h7. So um, nice, nice play by Alex as always. Never, never giving up easily. Yeah. By the way, a nickname would be more appropriate as Sasha, not Alex. Um, Alexander Kostunyuk. Uh, in Russian, the nickname for that is Sasha. Why is that? Is that is that something with like the writing in in Russian? Irina? I really don't know, Jen. It's not, no, it doesn't have anything to do with the writing. It just somehow, that's the, that is the diminutive. Well, it's um, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Knight e3, knight g5 played. Turning knight f3. Tricky. Ah, but there it is. Queen d5 check. No more fun and games. Ah, that sucks the air out of all the tricks. And now, okay. now, now you really yeah. got to think Stefan was going to win it. And make yeah, it at some point, but, he's going to put a rook behind the pass pawn and start pushing that a pawn. Yeah. And I think that was a good call on her part. Get the queens off the board. I mean, she doesn't have that much time. She doesn't want this to be any more exciting than necessary. Uh, so, yeah, I like this queen d5 move. Um, and if she wins, they're going to be within just one point of each other going into the three minutes. So I think that'll be, you know, that'll be good. We do want this match to be close, Jen, right? Oh yeah, we do. We do. It's it's gonna be fun for us in the one minute portion. And and, and uh, what do we have here? Just twenty five seconds left for Stefanova. By the way, there's a bunch of <laughs> there's a bunch of Russian players in the chat saying, "I also don't know why why yeah. Sasha comes from Alexander or Alexandra." Yeah. Sometimes things just sound good and they stick, right? That's the evolution of language. Um. Oh, look at this F four move. Nice. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I guess nice. Kind of. I mean. You have to be a little careful about trading off a lot of pawns, but I guess there's, I mean, it's not that easy to get rid of the the A pawn. I mean, if I were black, I would probably take it, right? And she did. Uh, she did, right? yeah. I was I was just, the reason I liked it was because it was giving, giving us that space to bring the rook out rather yeah. than having to watch our F2 pawn. But uh, yeah, this looks really nice. We're protecting the pawn. We're looking at playing rook A5, as you point out, Irina. And indeed, that happened. Rook yep. A5 now, Rook B5, Rook B7. Oh, beautiful. Mm, okay, looking good, looking good, I think. Oh. Wait, why, why, not, why, is, this, why is this bad? Knight, knight C5. Is there something with Knight A5? Maybe there was something with Knight A5? No. Well, anyway, um, sometimes the computer seems seems some really good tra tricks, but uh, yeah. okay. here... She's, she's still winning, but it's, you know, hasn't been she hasn't been able to promote the a pawn yet but i would say everything is still whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, what why happened we just, lost why the pawn? Just do no, the, why did we she don't want to lose the pawn? the pawn why did she just move the pawn i don't oh, move the knight that made no sense what what do we have in the current position oh, no well the current i mean it's just looking just like up one pawn draw. for stefanova wow. can she win this well she basically i mean the answer is no but she has more time now irena yeah actually, they both have no time 
It's actually uh, Kostin Yuku has a little bit less time, two seconds. Yes, I mean, she still has a chance, but like, it's crazy that she lost that A pawn. It's just crazy. Well, no time. Wow. Makes it very difficult oh to play. Oh my gosh. Black. Ah! No, it's a draw. Okay. A Knight first pawn. Knight oh, first pawn. Man. Oh man. She finds a fork. So disappointing for her. Oh, yeah, she's she's going to be so upset. She's going to be so upset. I'm, I'm just going to look at her face in the video. Well, she's already up. She's already oh. up for the break. As I think they are now. Yeah, um, yeah I know on that. To, on to three minutes. Yeah, no, I, I know that feeling of frustration. That, that's, that's the thing. This is exactly the problem in this, in this match. That even when she, like, completely has it, like, completely, right? Like, you know, even if she's lost a few half points like this already. I mean, you know, guys, it's, like, hard to... I mean, I'm not like, I'm not completely shocked, right? Because the moment I saw this move at four, I was like, well, you got to be a little careful, you know, trading down uh, the pawns. It still is, of course, enough to win. But, and once she won like the H pawn, like, yeah, everything is still good, right? You just kind of need to carefully start moving up the G pawn. But then, I don't know, in the time trouble, just this random move night before, like what possible reason did she have to move this night? Maybe she meant to move it somewhere else. I just don't know. Um, huh. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe just like worried about losing time, losing connection. It's hard. It's hard. Instincts take over and sometimes they yeah. are not what you want them to be. Um, right. it's especially when you're, you're having those difficult time scrambles earlier in the match and you're remembering them and, and that can, that can create a lot of momentum for the other player. In this case, Alexander Kostanyuk, who has that two point lead still going into the three minute. Um, we're going to take a, a quick break and be back with that exciting portion as speed chess gets even faster. Yeah, see you guys in two minutes.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championships. Uh, thank you for joining us on a rest day from the candidates. We've got a double header for you today, indeed. Right after this exciting match, we're going to see international master Polina Shuvalova versus FIDE master James Candy III in our I'm not a GM Speed Chess Championships. And the winner of that will play against Lawrence Trent. How did Lawrence get so far in this competition, Irina? I never could have seen that happening. Yeah. Um, well, I know that he has kind of a, a nice rivalry with Greg. Did, did, did they face off against each other? Honestly, I can't before? remember, Irina. You know, I think, you know, I know they played a couple of matches in previous I am, I'm not a GM championships, but this yeah. one, this one just like for some reason that I, I can't remember it at all. I mean, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. Maybe yeah, somebody in the chat I think, remember. I think you know more than you're telling me, Jen, but it's okay. Uh, so, you know, Polina Shkubalova, yeah, she's a very strong uh, Russian female player. She's, um, you know, like around 2,500 rated. And so basically, you know, GM level, I'm, I'm sure she'll get her title quite soon. So it's not a surprise to see her as a number one seed in this event. A few years ago, Alina Kashlinska did very well in the... Uh, I am not a GM tournament. I think she actually won it. I think she might have beaten uh, John Bartholomew in the final match, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of strong ladies that are you know right at that GM level who haven't yet gotten their title, and so they're very um, you know uh, strong favorites in this uh, championship. So the next, uh, the, so the match is going to be commentated on by Mont Hamilton and Jeffrey Xiang. So look out for that, guys. After we're done with the women's speed chess champ. Oh, it's going to be a fantastic show, and uh, you're you're definitely going to going to want to tune in for that. Absolutely, women's speed chess championships is what we're here for now, though. As we see Kostin Yuk facing off against Stefanova, two grandmasters, two former women's world champions. You know, Irina, there are currently 40 women in the world who hold the grandmaster wow. title. There are 40 women in history who've held the grandmaster wow. title. So you were talking a little bit earlier about ways to live longer. And well, apparently for females is to get the grandmaster title because every single woman who won the grandmaster title is still alive. Ticket yeah. toward immortality? Yeah, I mean, I hope so, Jen. I hope I, hope I punched that ticket in already. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well that's very cool so it's 40 women it's uh i mean it's gr definitely growing of course most of these have been in the last uh in the last couple of decades right and before that they were really just a handful you know the polgar sisters pierre cramling the georgian uh women players and you know apart from them you know um it's been like the new generations that had generation that has started after the year 2000 i think and so we've got Kostinyuk, two points ahead against Antoinette Stefanova, showing her prowess in uh, with little time, you know, uh, getting some dubious positions, but pulling out a lot of them. And that's given her this two points advantage. In this position, uh, she has a pretty aggressive position. So I rather like what she has yeah. on the board. We, we have a new opening, by the way. Um, Alexandra had been trying uh, the Joko piano, the Roy Lopez. Um, the Roy Lopez wasn't going for so well for her, but this is a kind of a new twist in the Italian for her this match. Yeah, they did definitely have not had this before. I mean, it looks like very dangerous if white gets an F6, but I suppose black can try to play F6 themselves, right? So like, I think Knight E4 is the most obvious move. Yeah, of course, Black might want to play Bishop C6, get like a free tempo on the knight. But somewhere you think that Black will probably need to play F6 here. Although, although we're also threatening Bishop H6. Yeah, that looks very unpleasant because after Bishop H6, Rook F7, there's E6. And oopsie, you lose either the Rook or you get made it on G7. Yeah, I mean, I see the computer here is suggesting this move H5 which is a very difficult move, I think, to play. I mean, it's like, yes, you're trying to deflect the queen away. So I would, first of all, I would say that even like, you know, queen h5, bishop e4 is not really obvious to me. It looks pretty dangerous. Um, with what move exactly, I'm not sure, because maybe these are not, uh, not really possible yet. I mean, there's f6 you got to look at, although again, you know, there's bishop g6 there. So maybe black can sort of, have enough confidence to go for this 
But then there's also like queen f4 that you got to consider. And then you got to be like, okay, or even queen e2. And then be like, well, why is my pawn on h5? It could be just a weakness. It's a pretty difficult move to play. And therefore, I'm not surprised that she didn't play it. She actually went where bishop takes e4 and f6, right? So right. Kind of great. Yeah, so removing the uh, bishop h6 idea uh, so that you didn't lose by force. But this is obviously very unpleasant. I mean, with that e6 pawn, it's like a bone in your throat. Bishop f4 played. You couldn't even play bishop takes f4 because I could have played maybe e3, e7. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, and then even bishop e3 check, just the calm king h1, which just kind of shows how problematic the position is that that exists. Yeah, unfortunately, so, I mean, like, she avoided getting mated, but she had to pay a lot for that mm -hmm. privilege, and um, positionally, she's just doing terribly here because that pawn is going to win the game for white, right? So white even can attack on the king side, I would say, like, it wouldn't be unheard of and actually she goes here which i interpret as a bit of an attacking move this queen pullback because like there's this queen h5 rook h4 idea yeah true she black just up. needs to find some kind of counterplay is it findable like with maybe d3 or something like that h6 had to be played and now queen g6 would reinsert those threats of playing rook takes h6 um yeah it looks like a terrible game for antoinetta honestly um yeah yeah, because you're, yeah, go ahead. Oh, the only consolation is that she's actually up a little bit on the clock, but it's not much of a consolation. Because the problem here is like, it's just like a, a little bit a game of dominoes. I mean, king h8, uh, you immediately have to start worrying about rook takes h6, pawn takes h6, queen h6, rook h7, queen takes f6 and rook e4. Does it work right away? Well, even if it doesn't, maybe you can start things off with rook e4 and prepare it. It's very difficult for you to make any any defensive moves as black because your queen is cut off from the defense because of that rock in your throat, that pawn on e6. Hmm. Interesting. You know, someone just said uh, in the chat, nice to see the Russian flag after such a long time. Yeah, and I think that, and I looked very closely, Jen. I was like, I was very interested by this question, but I was like, I think he's confusing the Bulgarian flag the tricolor there with the white, green, and red with the Russian flag, which is like uh, the white, you know, blue and red, right? And actually, Alexandra, I think, is playing under some kind of neutral international flag there. Um, but anyway, King H8, Rook E E4, so she's preparing a sack on... Yeah, Rook H6, sure. Why not, man? This is going to be... This is very... Or just preparing... To win in some pedestrian way, which is what you went mm. for. Yeah, Can't blame her. Why calculate with, when you can win without calculating? <laughs> yeah, although she definitely is actually, well, she's actually really uh, given up a lot. And it's a little unfortunate because I think that this sack was actually yeah. working. Right? Yeah, I agree. If she could have done it and like basically made it, uh, made it Stefanova. And so, that would have been the logical continuation. But well, maybe because... she got stuck on rook g7. Yeah. Like yeah, rook g7, but I guess there was rook g4 or something. Yeah, you mean like uh, right like, here. Yeah, like rook h7, right queen f6, rook g7. Rook maybe she got uh -huh. stuck here because it, yeah. I'm sure it's winning, but you do have to think here, right? Yeah, um, I agree. And she decided, you know what, instead of thinking, I'll just try to win easy. And maybe, maybe it's yeah. uh, rook h4 and queen h6 here. I don't know exactly what the win is, but... Sometimes, you know, it's difficult in blitz as opposed to classical because you can't calculate that final blow. Yeah. And now, well, okay, she's still better, but, you know, she's still better because of that pawn. But um, now that they're both down to under 20 seconds, I would say that anything can anything happen. happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have seen that when anything can happen, generally the anything turns out a little bit better for Ghost and Nuke somehow. Just a little speedier with the hand-eye yeah. coordination in those time scrambles. But, but this so far, the position on the board, I mean, for Antoinette, it's been kind of like a dream. She's actually up a pawn, which uh, she's it's just, just amazing. Although, of course, again, yeah, you're right, Jen, doesn't mean that much. And Kustanuk is coming to try to win that pawn, has a lot of activity. But I feel like, okay, Antoinette has held, held her own pretty well here. Maybe this will be a game where she gets lucky would be kind of nice. Um, yeah. But she has given up 
that extra pawn to activate her rook. And honestly, it's getting random again, and I'm getting concerned for, for her. I am too, because now, now Alex has two pass pawns, and it's just very easy for her to just start running them up the board. She has gotten her rook to A1, key, move the king to F5 to stop checks. And now she's pushing her pawns. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of times these game games end up becoming draws because we use our pawn to distract your rook and then we make a mass style trade. Yeah. Is that gonna happen here? This is kind of all crazy. I mean, obviously it's so hard to play with any kind of accuracy with like no time at all in these positions where you gotta calculate everything. Um, so who's gonna, I, don't, I still don't know what the result is gonna be. B6, F2. She's made a queen, and but okay. uh, but but look at this, Antoinette. I mean, sorry, Alexandra has made a queen as well, and she's got the check, and wow. that yeah, that just kills you. Wow. And you got the check there, and the major oh. pieces. Wow, more Rick F A was coming, and that means Costa Nuga's now up six three. She is double Antoinette Stepan of a score. Antoinette has to win this game. Don't make it a blowout. Um, I know we've got a lot of chess queen fans yeah. in the chat. But it, yeah. you know, it's it's even more exciting when the person you're rooting for is up against the ropes to the final hours, the well, final minutes, final seconds here in speed chess counts. But Jen, you know, I just want to note like how on point your your comment was. You know that when things get chaotic, it's like no matter what the position is, they seem to work out for Alexandra. I mean, there she was just. I mean, down a pawn in a rook end game. Like, yes, she had compensation, but, you know, in order to win that rook end game, right, actually extend her lead, I mean, it's pretty wild, her advantage over Antoinetta in that, like, under 20 seconds play. It's true. It's true. And there is all that blitz experience. Remember, we saw that in the beginning, we saw these insights, which, you know, chess.com now has for all players, and Alexander had a sample size of thousands of game and um, Antoinette just had a couple hundred. So right there, you can see um, one player with much more experience in these formats. Of course, you know, once in a while that's inaccurate because sometimes players um, use their burner account more frequently than their main account, but mm -hmm. uh, it still gives us a, a really useful, uh, a useful guide. Yeah, Alexandra always playing the tournaments on chess.com. Title Tuesdays, I think, are a favorite of hers. And, and streaming. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, now, what about this position here? We've got um, a, a London system. This is an old favorite of Antoinette Stefanova. You know, she was playing knight c3 and bishop f4 way before it was cool. So, I mean, is it is it cool? I don't know. I, 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 I don't like playing against that kind of stuff, but it's become so popular these days. And um, Antoinette has been playing it for decades. So yeah. she's very comfortable with these types of positions. But has she gotten a good one here? I, I don't really think so. I mean, her king's in the middle of the board um, and G5 has just been played. And I like gotta say G5, well, that's a bit of a wild move by Alexandra. I feel like, well, okay, I understand she wants to go Bishop G7, attack the E5 pawn. I still feel, Jen, that this is a move of a very confident player. That's actually my main interpretation of it. Like, I mean, from a chess point of view, it's like, okay, it really doesn't need to be played. Like, you can just go bishop e7 in castles, which is what I would do. But I think she's feeling, like, so confident about how this match is going that she, like, is like, all right, you know, I'll go for, like, a more risky plan where, like, I let my opponent play h4 and, um, you know, have more ideas. And actually, that's what happened. Um, and but let's see how it's going to work out for her. I mean, it still looks quite good. Well, nice little tricky move here by Antoinette. Bishop e5 is met by f4. And somehow yeah. that knight protects f4 and g3 at the same time, which is a, you know, quite convenient, saving the day, but still a very unpleasant position because, yes, the knight is doing its work. But what about the bishop on f1 and the rook on h1 and the king on e1? Um, just a mess of a position here with that knight coming to e4. Yeah, this is, I mean, the knight coming to e4, the knight coming to d3. I mean, you're just threatening. I mean, at this point, can't you just go there and take a, take the pawn? No. Oh. I think we will. I think I would take it. There move. it is. Alexander has played that move. King yeah, you know what's two. really bad, Jen? Here, let me tell you something. When the whole match, you've been getting great positions out, you know, in the middle game, opening middle game transition, and, you know, you're still losing the match, but then you start getting bad positions. That's a really bad sign, right? Because like the main advantage that you 
have been having has now seemed to like go <laughs> to go away. So this is this is a very worrying sign for Antoinetta to be having not just like a bad game, but like essentially just losing from the opening. It's kind of cool that like knight d1 check is a thing here. Not that it's the best move. I'd rather keep that knight. That's that's the sad thing. I mean, like knight d1 would have forced rook takes d1, but the knight is better. And look at this classy move. Gotta love it. Bishop f8. I mean, of course she's winning, but I love finding a move like this, you know, just just getting that last piece into the uh, the game with Bishop F8 aiming for C5. Okay, Lovely. oh, Knight D4. Oh, wait, what, King F3? Okay, where really, is the She's really running out to G4. Oh, she will get made it. I... Yeah, she will get made it, but what's yeah. the, what's the, <laughs> what's the main? Okay, here, let me guys. think about it. All right, so Kasuka is gonna think too. She's got like a minute, so. Queen A, Queen uh, E4 and H5 Jack here um she's playing oh, I, found, I found it jen i found it here's a checkmate yeah this one works this one works bringing that king cool. to h4 now bishop e7 well, it's not made because you can play queen e7 yeah. but it will force yeah. yeah all right very nice knight d2 queen f5 check bishop e7 i think you found a different one Irina. but we're yeah. on the next game uh does Irina ever play candy crush is asked by curiosity and yeah the answer to that is i actually liked candy crush quite a bit i got into it some years ago when it was like at the height of its popularity and i and i played a lot of candy crush on the train going into into work have you tried candy crush jen i haven't no no i uh, i'm gonna stay away i'm gonna stay away yeah <laughs> it is an addictive game. Oh, I, I know, play. I know. I've heard great things about it. I love candy and I love yeah. video games. So I feel like, you know, sometimes you just got to know what you should stay away from in life. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things I liked about it is there is this element of calculation. Like you sort of, you know, you play, play, but like at the end, you do have to just like in chess, you have to be like, okay, I've got like two or three or four moves to like finish off this combination so i think that's what i liked it was like really like you do have to stop and think it's not just uh you know uh completely a non-thinking you know click some buttons kind of game so i enjoyed that uh, yeah yeah just the right amount of thought right yeah exactly yeah. a little bit just like when you, when you get to the critical moment you're like oh gotta stop and calculate and i really like that parallel to chess So here, let's see the opening. We got Alexandra, seven to three. So far, I think she's won already a couple of games in the three-minute portion. Now she's back to the Spanish, and it's uh, still a Stein is deferred. Um, okay, cool. I guess this move, there's a little trick that if they take, there must be like queen d5, double attack, winning. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe it's not winning anything. There's still a queen d7, but... Um, or maybe, you know, if pawn takes just wants to take with a knight, I would assume there's a lot of, there's a lot of compensation there for the pawn as well. Um, yeah, plus there's bishop f7 tactic. You can also consider that version of it. But so Stefanova doesn't go for the capture. She goes for bishop g4 takes, knight takes, a knight f6. And yeah, you can't take the pawn because of bishop d5, knight d2. All right, so I like Kostinuk's position here. I think she's gotten a good one from the opening. And wait, she has a lot more time. Yeah, it's just very demoralizing at this point to be in Stefanova's shoes, right? It's so hard to keep playing your best. I uh, I have no idea um, how you do it. You know, I mean, it's the same in um, a lot of different sports. You know, being able to live in the present not think yeah. about how difficult this match has been for you in the past yeah you know, all sorts of sports even for poker which is a game i play very seriously it's really tough when you know you've had some tough hands you've lost some chips and you have to just pretend that it didn't happen and start mm -hmm. from zero yeah. i mean of course these players love chess so they're really good at it but it's hard to be uh it's hard to be great at that by definition you know yeah yeah it's like being less bad at it than uh, than the average opponent is kind of like what is is really the bar you're looking for in a way who do you think is can you give an, an example Irina, of somebody you've talked to or know that's like really good at that it's just like forgetting the past and just playing their best even if they've mm. been playing badly hmm. oh well i can give an example i don't know i feel like uh i feel like caruana is quite 
resilience like that. I don't know. He seems to be very uh, level, level uh, in his kind of emotions, right? Um, so you don't, I mean, I'm, I don't know how he takes it on the inside, but from what I see on the outside, like he seems pretty calm in, in any situation, just like always keeping that professional demeanor. So um, yeah, that's one person I would think. Of. What do you think about that, Jen? Yeah, no, I think that's a great observation. I think it's also a good observation of faking it till you make it. Because like if you if you project confidence and calm, even when you're like, you know, not having the tournament of your life, a lot of times yeah. your your uh, physicality will rub off in your on reality. Now, this game is actually really rich. So Stefano is not doing badly at all. Uh, in fact, I think this is a kind of Roy Lopez that she's going to have some fun in. She's just played bishop to f6. So all of her pieces are pretty well placed. Um, queen c7. The knight's gotten into c6, which you might say is like a big problem, but I think it's just like a minor problem. <laughs> you know, it can't yeah. be ousted with knight d8. The knight on b7 is not good now. So if it goes to d8, she would be very happy to try to remove that knight. Yeah, I agree. This is not such a bad position uh, for black. And um, of course, it's actually a very unbalanced position, which is good for her. Anything can still happen. Uh, a5, really interesting move, trying to open the A file, trying to get like the knight to come out to A5. I would say, yeah, like if she can even things out on time, maybe this game can get random enough and she will uh, she will perhaps get a little bit of the luck that's been going around in this match. Black played H6. So what is H6 about? I guess, uh, hmm. oh, I guess she didn't want to get her bishop trapped. Okay, makes sense, yeah. So now knight d8 yeah. mm -hmm. move you've been dying to play. Um, that's a problem. Like sometimes the knight on c6, it's so pretty, but it spends so much time getting there and then like it removed with one move, knight d8. So I kind of like black here. I think the position is just tends to be easier to play. So I really like this uh, line that Antoinette has been playing throughout the match. Knight e5, just Ooh. seizing that square. Wow! Wow! Really? She took she took that guy. Wow! Mm -hmm. This stuff like. That kind of positionally surprises me a lot from Alexandra because I mean, I don't know. Bishop on c2 is pretty bad. Um, I know the bishop on h7 is pretty much equivalent, but still. Okay. The knight yeah. on g f3 is really good now in a way, right? And look at this yeah. exciting sequence. So, yes. work to a2, pinning the, the bishop on c2, but the pawn on h6 is now in capture. Yeah. But if we take it twice, there's queen g7 check at the end. So, we need to watch out. Um, and C3 was the idea as well. Yeah, no, so. I really like this for white. I mean, I, I don't know, just so much easier for white to play. I mean, bishop on h7 is dead and you're just gonna, okay, so she took the bishop. Okay, I guess that's fine. She's gonna take on, she's gonna take on h6, right? Oh, wow, g6, really? And there it is, a trade wow. of queens here, um, but with those, wait, what's going on now? Yeah. Oh, we just win the pawn on b2 for nothing. Oh, wow. boy. Such good play by Alexandra and so quick too. Great play, great play. I mean, I couldn't even follow um, because her ideas were so um, were so yeah. quick. I mean, honestly, the the idea of keeping that knight, which was such a strong defender and attacker, um, was, was really savvy. Yeah. I mean, I suppose at some point she will just go rook b8 maybe and like trap that bishop. I mean, I think that will happen. I mean, I don't think she won in the cleanest way because, you know, she did wind up losing the c pawn, which I think was very unnecessary, but like she still has a lot more time and with a dominating position, just rook b7. I mean, yeah, she's going to put like Antoinette into some kind of zugzwang. She doesn't even have to really hurry to do it. She can just like improve her king. Yeah, bring, oh, just don't go king c4. Don't play king c4 though. Gosh, yeah. yes. No now free move king c4. Uh, yeah. There it is. She plays it to the right moment when she can play king c5. Yeah. Maybe d6 at some point. I mean, yeah, she just wants to go and win the rook. It's crazy. She wants to go king b7, king c7. Wow, the rook wow, is Wow, look at that. And what's the move here? Okay. So there, it wasn't, it's actually just not possible to trap the rock. Unbelievable. Barely. Yeah. So she just goes in for this. But look at this. This is yeah. just forced win. D6, D7, and D8 because the bishop is dead. And look at that. 8-3. As uh, Antoinette Stefanova now needs to win almost every game. Yeah. Every game. Yeah, no, I feel like, you know, she just needed to capitalize more on her chances in the five minute, right? Like, cause we could, we could see that chess wise, she was playing really well. Um, if it would have gone better for her, maybe it would be a closer match at this point. But at some point when Alexandra saved so many bad positions, 
um, and got into like an even faster part of the game of, of the match, right? Like now she really is just kind of hitting her stride and she's playing better too, by the way. Like Alexandra has actually, I think, imp improved her play. And that's, that's a problem as well. No, that's not a good sign. Yeah, she is, you're right. I, I, I see what you mean. She really is, especially that last game. That was a fantastic one. Very nice. Wait, yeah. It looks like the game was aborted. Do they need to, let's, oh, they accidentally did 1-1. One, one. Yes, we're still in three minute with the one second increment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think our, you know, the, our prediction is going, it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, it looks like Alexander Kostinyuk, chess queen, is going to move forward in this, uh, in this women's speed chess championship. But okay, let's see if Antoinetta can um, at least uh, get in some more wins here. Uh, they're back to this Catalan line where she had a good position previously. Alexandra seems to have improved something. Uh, with this bishop b4 move. I wonder if she will be taking that knight. Actually, it kind of makes sense. Why not? And then just get castled quickly. Yeah, yeah. And remember, like, that was one of the few wins that Stefanova had when um, that bishop on c6 mm. actually got trapped. Mm -hmm. So here we have, yeah. uh, she did not take on c3, did Kostinyuk. Um, so instead, looks like she just played queen a5 and is ready to castle. Yeah, Favorite castle mode. a3, and I wonder if the bishop will then take, or or can black get away with a move like bishop e7. But okay, she went knight c5, queen c4. Yeah, rather strange move, knight c5. Okay. Um, yeah, what is the point of the knight here, I honestly? I don't know. Is she trying to get something on e4? But at the moment, that square is well covered. And if we take on c3, we don't have time to go to e4 because you're attacking our queen. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out also what that move is trying. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, queen a6, what I was thinking to occupy the d3 square, but it just really feels like we need to get castled here because things like knight b5 are quite annoying. Knight cb5 threatens knight oh, c7 wow. check, forking the queen and the king, and bishop takes b4. Is Antoinette just losing? I mean, Antoinette's just yeah. winning. She's yeah, just winning. Sorry. Just winning. Uh, Kostinuk has won so many games in a row. I got, I, 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 I uh, misspoke. <laughs> Stefanova, I think, is just going to win the first game. She's won in a while because this is just over. What about Bishop A5? It's the only yeah. move? Bishop A5 hangs a knight on C5. Yeah, I mean. So basically, yeah, things are like pretty much over here. I think she should just kind of resign and play the next one. I think she got a little, yeah, overconfident, right? That's, uh, that can happen. Um, so queen a five happens. Okay. So, well, she's just losing a rook, right? It's, I mean, like, well, instead of, instead, yeah. um, Antoinette had just played a three with the idea of taking on C five. So, I mean, <laughs> even stronger because you weren't able to castle beautiful little win there and a demonstration that you can get too confident, right? That does happen to yeah. some people. I didn't that, like that knight C five move. That just looked kind of awkward. I mean, it turned out like way worse yes. than I even thought, but it, yeah, it was not the right move. And awkward becomes disastrous, Irina, when you're not castled. That's the thing. Sometimes you can get away with awkward and then like just kind of like reconfigure. But when you're also not castled, it's the end. And we, yeah. we saw a nice demonstration of that here. As Stefanova plays another um, delayed Steinitz, uh, opening that she's had a lot of success in, in terms of the position she's gotten, right? Yeah. Not always being able oh, to actually look, convert. Look, Jen, it took, it took a couple of hours for Alexandra to finally put that pawn on D5, right? You know? The difference between an E4 player and a D4 player, I know, right? right? It's really, really funny. I mean, I honestly think that that is, you know, that example illustrates, you know, that difference because for a D4 player, like this move would be just automatic. And for... Alexandra, she tried all kinds of things before finally settling on this uh, on this setup. And uh, well, yeah, I mean, her position looks obviously quite good now. I mean, that's why this plan with d5 is effective, right? You're just getting the space on the queen side. You can just go knight c3. Or even I think, oh, she took a little early, but I guess it's, yeah, knight d2. She's just playing against, you know, the bishop on g7. Um, there's no f5 at the moment because of knight g5 ideas. Oh, uh, is that true? Yeah, because you're, you're going to play f4, yeah? Yeah, because then f4 traps the bishop, and I get I win the exchange, but I would trap the bishop. But that said, it still looks very dangerous to play f5, because maybe we could do some... What will we do instead? Could we take first? I'm not sure. 
Um, anyway, P5. P5 was played instead. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I do like these kinds of positions for white in general. I just feel like it's, you know, free, free advantage. Maybe it's not, it's not too bad for black, but of course the bishop on G7 is the big problem. Squares like C6 are the problem. The pawn on B5 is a problem. So, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a lot of fun. I personally wouldn't want to get positions as black like this. Uh, she played H6, but okay. Let's see if. Maybe it won't be quite as bad. Well, the okay. difference between this and a typical King's Indian is we don't have a light squared bishop, right? So that's a bummer. Yeah. Because not because it also may, means a lot of our squares are weaker than they normally would be. Mm. Um, but we do have a, a big change here in the position as she's played knight c5. And um, now Alice has this gorgeous pawn on d6. I mean, that's a d4 player's dream, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, the thing is, it's like these pawns look not bad, but they're not too dangerous, right? Like, I mean, I suppose you can go C4. I suppose at some version they can be okay. The problem for black in this position is like these two poor pieces. Neither of them are very good. Um, and D6, Knight, C8, Queen, D5. Yeah, look at that centralization by white. Looks really impressive. And now we just have to figure out, you know, can we take this? pawn or not and if not you know maybe just doing something like improving the rook i mean the problem with taking the pawn is that you open the bishop right so um that is a little bit of an issue but it's uh you know knight e5 knight b6 yeah i pro like queen c5 knight a4 yeah i probably would not take that pawn i would say i don't want to do yeah. anything with that bishop oh but she took it yeah Knight b6, yeah. And we do see board. knight b6 on the board. And you mentioned queen c5. What about queen c6? Then you have bishop takes e5. So we can't do that one. We have to play queen c5. Yeah. Or queen b5 is what she played. Okay, so she played queen b5, but that hangs the pawn on d6, which, which was such a lovely pawn to have, huh? Mm, yeah. Well, good news for her is at least there's no discovery like that because you can take it with the queen. Otherwise, she'd be like losing her knight. Um, yeah, there's no discoveries here on the queen by the knight. So queen d6 is the best. And um, she's going to be, I guess, uh, up a pawn somewhere. Yeah, maybe like something like some, some line like knight, either knight can actually take on c4 at this point. Like, let's just take with this one. Uh, and like the key line is something like this. And now black has to figure out like if they take, I take, you take. Okay, black is down a pawn. Um, black is going to be down a pawn in any case, right? So, um, but there's pretty good drawing chances, and maybe you know they can even give up the queen for that pawn. Oh, nice, nice idea. I love, that. <laughs> I yeah. love that. I mean, Stefanova's have... got no time, Irina. Look at this. Thirteen seconds left on the board. What's oh, going on? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not a lot of time you want to leave yourself with when you're going to be down a pawn. So she just played c3, which I don't know how good that is. Um, but you know, Alexandra has time to figure this out. And well, she just took right away. She, you know, the result of the consideration of sticking knight c6 in there, but she figured like. Let's just go. This I know this position is strong, and I've got an extra minute on minute yeah. and ten seconds on the clock. Yeah, very practical play by Alexandra, right? Like not trying to find the very best move, but like she's up. Actually, she's up two pawns here, and um, that's plenty, right? I mean, she can just move her queen back somewhere. Queen e two, queen uh, queen a five. But they have repeated moves once. I don't think she's going to take the draw though, because just. You know, sure, it gives her closer to clinching the match, but like Antoinette only had a few seconds left on the clock and she could not avoid that flag. Um, she did lose on time and we've got that five point lead again for Alexandra after a rare loss last round. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, the time situation was just too bad, yeah? Three minute, you really got to speed up. It doesn't look like Antoinette has made that adjustment yet. And we're actually getting close, you know, to the, um, you know, to the end. But how much more time do we have actually in the, in the section, Jen? Do we know? 20, a decent amount of time, actually, you oh. know, 27 minutes left. Oh. But still, you know, there's a lot of points to make up for, right? Yeah. yeah. So... 
And then, of course, we get our bullet portion, which is always a blast, no matter what the score is. Yeah. Um, I expect Alexandra to be quite good in the bullets, but, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get surprised. Maybe Antoinette is just really good when she doesn't have to think at all. You know, sometimes I, I wouldn't be happen. surprised about that, Irina. I actually yeah. think that's true because you, we saw her bullets rating, bullet rating was 2,700 plus and a little higher than Alexandra's, sure, with less games. Yeah. But I think what what you said is just is totally right. That right. she ha Antoinetta has such great instincts. Exactly. And yeah, she isn't that weird how that sometimes happens that players who get into time pressure and classical chess are actually really good at bullet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was funny, Jen, because I basically like never play bullet. But sometimes when I've had to play bullet, like uh I've done quite well. And it's literally with like zero practice. Um and like when my one of my speed chess matches, I think it was last year, I played Nana Zagnidze and it, well, it wasn't a, a great match for me, but when we got to the bullet portion, I started making up all of the points and I even wound up, yeah, I wound up tying that match. And later on, I mean, I lost in the tiebreaker, but like, but later on, Nana said something like, like she felt like, you know, I, I was playing so much better in the bullet that it was like a different player. You know, wow. and yeah, like, and it was not because I'd done any special preparation. I don't consider myself a strong bullet player. I don't even know. It just feels, um, you know, like a completely random thing, right? Where you might do really well or you might or not. I don't even know if you, you really need to train in this, you know? Well, yeah, I think also if you're if you're frustrated and you're emotionally not like feeling great, at least in bullet, you don't really have time to sit with any emotions because you just have to make a move every time. Yeah. <laughs> so I think some, in, a, in a way, the fact that it's so fast can reduce reduce what we call tilt, right? Hmm. But yeah. this this particular game, um, looking very balanced, actually, like lots of interesting play for both sides. I mean, we, we just saw the, the first piece trade of the game on C4 here. Yeah. I wonder if you can't, can you go C5? You'd like to go C5, but I guess I take, and you don't really have time to go Bishop D3 because the Bishop on C5 and B4 is hanging. Yeah. So I get two Bishops for just a rock. So nice idea, but doesn't quite work. Yeah. Well, I suppose Bishop D6 looks normal. Um, A5 is interesting. So she won Bishop E7. Okay. So she... I'm sure she wants to play C5. Like right here, how about C5? I, well, oh, now oh. it works well, right? Yeah. And that's why we always say um, yeah. that, well, it works for multiple reasons because C5 takes C5. There's also Bishop F3 in the, the uh, yeah. Bishop on D2 Bishop. would hang. Yeah, uh -huh. so that was a nice idea. You know, that goes to show whenever you have an idea and it doesn't work, a lot of times it's not wasted time because it works like yeah. a couple moves later with a, a few little minor changes. Um, now um, C5 runs into knight C6, which is a bit annoying. Yeah, Jen, then, can I point out something really unusual, which is that yeah. Stefanova oh. has two minutes more on the clock. I, I was just thinking that, oh my gosh, two minutes. That's insane. Is this another, yeah. how, why is this happening? It's so surprising, especially after a win. Yeah, yeah I don't know what, the, what that is, but I guess Alexandra wants to show us like that she can, you know, still win with like um, 15 seconds against like more than two minutes. I mean, I think maybe she just wants to challenge herself. I mean, I'm maybe kidding a little bit there, but I think that might be a little part of it, right? Like, okay, everything's been going so well. I mean, let's see how she does when she's the one that has little time, right? Because uh, normally it's only been Stefanova in these situations and not even like this bad. Like this is quite extreme. I don't think that's why it is. Uh, I think it's more that like she just got excited, interested in the position and maybe she's a little less competitive now because she feels like she's going to win the match a lot. Chess yeah. is interesting. These positions are interesting. Sometimes, I mean, I'm sure this is true for you, Irina, because you love the game so much. Sometimes it's hard in blitz when you reach a really interesting position yeah. and you just have to play a quick move. Isn't that like frustrating sometimes? Oh, it is. Right? I'll just yeah. sit there thinking, I'm like, oh, yeah. but this is a critical position, but there's no time to figure it out. And I'll just like, but I will waste some time anyway. It's one of, one of the things that is like one of my drawbacks as a, as a blitz player. Oh yeah, sure. A lot of great players who love the game are bad at, are bad at blitz for precisely that reason. They like chess too much. But um, in general, um, that's not a problem with Kostin Yu. She's very practical. Yeah. By the way, though, speaking of practical, I, I just love this position, not only on the clock, but on the board for um, for Stefanovo, because she's starting to really drum up the potential of an attack here. 
Yep. Kind of one of those both sides situations. Would be five. I love this movie. Is she going to do that? Mm, uh, there it is, Irina. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because, you know, Queen G4 was running into like some kind of F5. And so you don't want to have a potential queen trade. Uh, so this made sense to me. But F5 um, anyway. Wow. Look at that move yeah. from, from Costa Nuka, just a second on the board. I mean, this oh, is wow. amazing. Take, take, maybe queen F3 is what I would be looking at. Okay, I like it. And she's so good, is Costa Nuka, that she's under so much time pressure and she's still playing the best defensive moves. Yep, well, we're going to see. We're going to see if Antoinette, now, like, Antoinette is under a minute, right? So she needs to speed up if she wants to... Uh, use that time edge this is really very interesting guys because i mean i wanted to find out like how is alexandra gonna do when she has no time against a lot of time right and this is the first game we're really seeing it but Antoinette the longer you talk the less it's true I know. <laughs> right? the longer you talk, it's like not 30 seconds but here we do have a couple quick moves queen f3 blocking that pawn on f4 what's the threat here is there any threats here for any side? I don't Let's know. See. Rookie two, rookie two is sort of obvious to me. Like it. Um, I like it. Just just get that rook into yeah. the uh, threatening the e7 square. Yeah. I see there's some kind of move knight e7. There's zero chance she's going to no, no, play no, with no, rook c7. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> now it's no anyone's game, Irina. This happens so much. 10 yep. seconds. It's actually Stefanova. Well, they have exactly the same amount of time, both about 10 seconds. Wow. Super exciting. Knight d5, maybe. I don't know. This is the, the way I would blunder a piece, Jen. Knight d5, e6, and lose the knight. That's just oh, but so, get, catch so up with high position. Queen g4, knight d7, rook c7 has been played. And now Antoinette is winning on the board, but she has less time. Yeah, they got, they got no time. So I, I don't even know what to say here. Like the knight on d7 is hanging. How does she defend that? Uh, it looks like pretty losing, but is it? Uh, yes. Oh, but look at this. Bishop G3 wins the queen. Oh, wow. There it is. Take that queen All off. Right. Can you win in time? Come wow. on. Well, good for her. Good for her. And she oh. won by resignation. L lovely. Lovely. I mean, uh, now it's nine, nine to five. So yeah. um, Alexander, okay. continue. Yeah, she needs to be a little Four careful. I mean, if it gets any closer and then they go into bullet, like, yeah, anything can still happen. So that was a pretty crazy game, actually. Alexandra was so close to, I don't know, to not losing, even though her time situation was so bad. So they're back to the deferred Steinitz, and Alexandra is still sticking with that system that worked quite well for her last time. Right, right. Just playing d5 and kind of uh, keeping that space advantage. But didn't she take on d7 last time or she left the bishop on a4 for a while, I think. Um, this game looks a little different in the move order, but similar idea. She's going to expand on the queen side and that kind of King's Indian-esque setup. Um, and speaking of King's Indian-esque, f5 on the board. But, you know, we get rid of that light squared bishop, which is always a bit of a bummer because our bishop on a7 is surrounded by pawns of her own color. Yeah, so, okay. I mean, I still like white's position, you know, just like the structure of it. Um, so much easier to play as white. I guess I would just go bishop e3 here, just develop, um, look for a good moment to play c5. Okay, she goes c5 right away. That makes sense as well. Uh, what happens if they take, I guess there's some kind of queen b3 attack and threatening d6, right? Like, mm -hmm. And now the question is, do you want to go c6 or take on d6? Okay, so she took. Maybe bishop takes. I actually like bishop takes, John. And she took with a bishop. Um, the reason I like taking with a bishop more, because if you take with a pawn, the bishop stays just really bad. So this is actually a chance for you to improve your bishop a bit. And if they trade it, well, at least it's off the board, right? You don't really need it. Otherwise, the bishop is not so bad. He has at least some potential from that square. And yeah, like maybe, oh, wow. There was already some sort of really interesting Rook takes F3. on the board. Yeah, that Antoinette didn't go for, like maybe take some, like, I don't know, knight h4, for example. But I'm glad she didn't think about it for a while. Like that's more practical decision that she's been making. Um, yeah. So that's nice. You know, we saw her get that big time advantage last game. Um, so yeah, I love, love that she just said knight f4, rook f4, um, knight d2 played. So earlier you talked about the superfluous knight. So both knights 
wanting the e4 square. But in this case, it's a bit different because it's not like um, the rook on f4 can um, ever really take on e4. Yeah, I think I'm, I mean, I'm expecting this king to move at some point because I don't think black is very comfortable in this relationship. Um, right, Ooh, like there. right here. Right, I'm a little concerned. So if knight takes, are you really taking with the b pawn? I guess you are actually. Why? You, why can't you take with the bishop? Yeah, maybe you can. I was kind of concerned D6. about d6. There's I guess you can go queen, queen f7. f7. Yeah, actually, you're still holding this. You're going to be able to hold that pawn if I take. You take with the rook and you protect it. Well, I guess you could um, take on. You could take, and if you take on c7, and then um, yeah, well, wow. and you're going to eventually win the pawn. Okay, but, but she did take. She did in fact take with a b pawn, which was your first instinct. Right. Um, yeah. He takes c5, and now uh, speaking of the, the superfluous knight situation, we did get rid of one of the knights and put the other one on e4. So it did turn out really nice for white in that strategic sense. Yeah, this is a nice play by white guys, like f3 in order to establish the knight on that square and then knight e4. It's, things cannot really go wrong for you when you have a knight like that on the board. So for now, white's got everything under control. Um, what is this move about? I guess she just wants to simply take the a6 pawn, right? Yeah, but we got to think about from black's point of view, can we get some kind of counterplay? Well, she's just played a5 protecting the pawn, which is certainly nice because if the queen starts chasing the pawn again with like queen a6 or queen a7, we do have the idea of playing a4 and kind of trying to lock it down. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alexander did not choose for that. She played queen to c6 herself, keeping the pressure rather on the c5 pawn. Yeah, I wonder if she wants to take it. I mean, I, I mean, no. if, I, if you take, I take, I guess you take. Yeah, I mean, looks better for white. I agree with that. I don't know, the rook can come down to d2. Yeah, now that there's a rook b8 on the board, you know, there's more pressure on the position. Rook c2, a4, all played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's like it's gone quite well for black in the sense mm -hmm. of black counterplay with the rooks. Nice rook on b8, nice rook on d4. The bishop's not great, but he's just playing a defensive role, like basically like a pawn in this position. And it's it's enough for now. Yeah. So how does white improve here? Well, unfortunately, I mean, you can take the bishop. That's just a terrible idea that straightens out that pawn structure. Um, and I it's really know. dangerous to go knight c3, right? Because when you go knight c3, at some point, you know there's going to be like some sort of sack like that. H3 was played. Um, I, I, why, what's the idea with that move? I don't know. I, I don't know. Pass the turn. Pass the turn and just do something yeah. mildly useful. Actually, I, I totally understand this move and like, not a bad idea at all to give the king like a square for later on. We don't know what kind of end game we're going to reach. So I think it's just another good practical move. She doesn't know what to do. That's the thing. It's not, it's not like it's very easy for white to make a move here because no matter how good the knight is, uh, what can you do with it? Well, she decided to take, which is yeah, that's surprising. very surprising because then after Bishop takes C5, um, the B2 pawns hanging at the end of the line, right? Yeah, and then, and then there's like, you know, rook D to D2. So actually, really surprising, that decision, you know, that night was really important. I don't know what she is really thinking here. And don't forget, there's like this kind of move coming. So this is, she didn't even offer the queen trade. This is like a disaster for white. Oh, and by the way, I saw the bar go wild. And the reason is that after knight C5, rook B6 was totally winning for black. Oh, wow. So nice knight, idea. Nice, knight, knight, very, very hard to see because... You, you know, you don't look at that, the knight looks so powerful, but the problem is even queen d7 doesn't work because you can play bishop c5 and everything's protected. Nice, nice. Yeah, really nice idea. And it doesn't work after rook c5 because then you have queen c7. But let's get into the, the main position because both of them have 15 seconds left on the board. And it looks like... Queen g6. Uh, it looks like Antoinetta is, um, is going to win another game, guys. Keeping yeah, the match a little bit win? closer. Like rook f2, like queen b1, rook back, queen c2. She's probably going to win this pawn. That's what's going on. So that's but why I thought, I, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm they're thinking, they're... yeah, like this, this line, I thought this was pretty, oh, I guess there's queen e4 though. Maybe then you promote just the a pawn or something. But like if you that. catch up with the, with the main position, it does look like somehow Alexandra oh. has gotten herself oh, in a wow. draw. Oh God, I don't know how that happened. We lost, she lost a couple of our pawns. Totally wow. winning. I think they are going to do some kind of draw for here. 
or maybe just a repetition of position. That's sometimes the easiest way to do it. Um, but yeah, that was wild. How did that happen, Irina? Yeah, totally I mean, winning, but <laughs> lost the lost the thread somehow at those final seconds. Yeah, as... I mean, we can we can see for a second how that worked out. I think I have the game. Uh, wait. Oh, well, let me try to find. By the way, we've got a four point lead maintained by Alexander now. Yeah, I think, was it this one? One second, Jen, maybe? Yeah, it's this one. Let me, let's see how it actually happened for a second. Um, oh, actually it happened the way I was thinking, right? Like it was like, I, I mean, pretty much this, I blundered into this move. And so she starts, so she should have pushed up the pawn actually. Yeah, actually she's winning. So right? then she if lost, the yeah. Pawn, they... I see. So she didn't. She didn't protect the pawn. But yeah, we can get back to the other game now. Yeah. I just wanted to take a quick look. We can keep on the analysis board for the time scrambles. Um, and let's uh see what's going on here. I okay. mean, we can keep on the live board. All right. Um, let's see. Back to the live board. Yeah. No, that's sad again. So many chances left on the table by Stefano. Yeah, that one was a bit more understandable though than some of the earlier ones. I don't think she was quite as disappointed with that one because yeah. you know, it, 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 yeah, she had to find the accurate sequence, but she had eight seconds, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the ones that I think are really upsetting are when she's up a significant amount of material and somehow everything floats away, right? Mm -hmm. She had a couple of those earlier on. But any, in any case, we're now in a new game where white just seems really nice. Because yeah, so they had six. another another Catalan. <laughs> you know, Catalan has been working out really well overall for Stefanova. She, yeah, she should just stick with that and not try the London again. Um, yeah, I mean, she has 95 coming up. I'm going to make a bet that in this game, Jen, white will play the move G4 somewhere. Oh, I love that. Okay. I, I, okay. Yeah. I'll bet against it. Go yeah. ahead. All right. We're going to bet a dollar, Jen. All right. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna I'm be, trying to think. I mean, I know Antoinette likes this move in general, but you know, I know it's not that easy. I'm just saying at some point in this game, but we'll see. Um, it might not. That, that's that. hard because the games go so long. The chance yeah. that it'll just be like some random rook end game. It'll no, be yeah, I don't. Far. I don't mean like that. I, I mean, I don't mean in a random rook end game. I'm gonna say it's somewhere in the middle game. Ah, okay. My bet is getting play. better. That rarely yeah. happens. Like you well, make I gotta, a bet. I gotta make it more fair. And right? then the turns get better for me uh, <laughs> after I made the bet. <laughs> Love it. Love to see it. <laughs> Um, so let's see here. The problem for me in this position, the why I cringe at it is that bishop on the light square bishop, which has just moved to b7, is now yeah. like still bad. It was bad on a6 and it's bad on b7, right? Yeah, I'm not liking that we've allowed them to play c5. Like that is not uh that's not good. I don't know why Alexandra didn't do it. I guess she wants to have more preparation to make sure there's no she wants to make sure there's no d5, right? No c5, d5. Okay, got it. So but you might not be able to do it forever, right? Yeah, I well, I need to think about how to deal with it. So she stepped away. Okay. I mean, I'm definitely not seeing that this move is going to happen anytime soon. So things have to really improve uh, for my for my prediction to work. And D takes C5 has been played. Um, and now yeah. Bishop takes C5. Um, Bishop yeah. takes B7, still well covered by the queen on B7. How about G4 here, John? G4 in this position, huh? It's not very completely. aggressive. It's not completely crazy. I mean, you can no, I, 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 yeah. Check. Check I can't G2. even know if we can have three or something. Go for the end game. You know, I know she likes this move. I know she's going to think about this. Stefano Vanel with a little less than one and a half minutes contemplating here what to do. She has taken on B7. G4. Oh. G4, let's go. How about b4 attacking the bishop on c5? Yeah, I agree. You can throw that in and then g4. All right. Ah, uh, h4. We're that's, you know, little, Irina. We're getting that, a little closer. <laughs> that's not good for you, Irina, because the chances of playing h4 and g4 are a lot lower. No, Usually no, it's she one or the to, other. Maybe she even wants to go h5 and like positional, you know, positional bind, like in the Karakon. I don't, okay, so big, big trades here, but I'm a little worried about knight e4 okay, at the end of the variation. Too. Wait, if what about like, d1 and yeah. f2, Irina? Oh, oh okay, yeah, that's a big tactic, on, right? Okay. Bishop takes F2. Uh, uh, yeah. She's just playing knight e4 right away, but don't forget White's got game of her own, right? I mean, after knight to e4, bishop d4, there was there was queen d8 check stuff. So yeah. 
White had some counterplay there. She's played bishop d4 herself, though. Doesn't want to Yeah, maybe allow... she should have... Maybe, I think she should have given the check and then bishop d4 yeah. was a lot more natural because it's always better to activate the queen. We don't really like the queen stuck on d1. Um, so, yeah, at this point, things are looking pretty comfortable. Actually, you know that knight f2 is a tactic, Jen? Look at that. It's kind of cool. I think I spotted my... First tactic. Oh, yeah, nice. Knight F2. Two, king takes and queen e5, winning a nice little pawn. Well, um, Bishop, yeah. by the way, in the game, we've got some tactics because after Bishop c5, queen c5, queen d8 check, white could have taken on f7, but then black would have taken on f2. So instead, we see knight d3. Hmm. Um, and now this is actually looking like it could be kind of balanced. What well, black yeah. will probably move the queen to h5, looking at queen d1 check. I yeah. guess I would prefer black because some sneaky oh, yeah. things could happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, white's king is in a lot more danger. So for sure, I prefer black. And yeah, I think I'm going to lose my uh, my bet, Jen, because I don't see in what sense g4 is an attacking move ever going to happen in this game. But I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I felt very <laughs> happy about my odds when you played h4. I mean, when I'm sorry, yeah. when I came out of late h4. <laughs> yeah, uh, but knight c5. Okay, that makes the chances of the game being drawish much higher, right? Although, although yeah. maybe I'm wrong because you can't play knight c5, b c5 easily because there's queen b1 check and queen in b2. So, for instance, if knight c5, pawn c5, queen b2, queen d2, we check and then we play queen b2, and that looks really good for black. So, um, I think uh, instead, what we got in the oh, game. Look, Jen, 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 look at this. I'm sorry, Jen. I see this line here. Look at this. Here, here, and g4 only move ah, you got it you would win but but let's look at the at the if we if we skip ahead to the main game look at this we've got some some real action here as it looks like queen b1 check was possible in this last move but instead h5 okay oh they got no time yeah queen trade no queen trade on the board oh, Knight black is coming. Looking good black is looking like they're winning that pawn. Yes. that's what's gonna matter and uh yeah antoinetta has no time this has been such a disaster, like this game, like because Antoinette loses again, and then I'm losing a dollar. I mean, it just it just can't get any worse. I know. Well, maybe she'll play G4 here, and I'll give you ah, and there it is. Alexander Kostinik did win the game. That was a nice both sides game because that pawn on A3 kept Stefanova honest in the end game, and it was F2 that kept her honest in the middle game, and unfortunately. Um, Failed to fail to hold as Stefanova is now down five points again. Which just this is our last game of three minute, most likely, Irina. Yeah. F6. Yeah. I'm sure is this an alpha? can't wait. I, I don't wait, think wait. so. I don't think oh. so. She's probably just trying. But it doesn't Something. move. Yeah, yeah, look, oh, look, no. she has a concept. She has a concept here. Jen. Okay. Overprotect okay. the pawn so she can move her knight. She's playing this really fast, so I assume that like. You know, as ugly as this looks, uh, it's all a concept. She's going to castle queen side here. Just watch that. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think this one's going to see a repeat visit. <laughs> as it just looks very, very dangerous for black what in the here. What is she doing? She's just, you know, putting every single pawn on a dark square with that. And while she's missing the light square in bishop, it's pretty bad positional strategy. But I think she, this is a little bit like of a tilt, tilted game, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. And I do think it's possible it was a mouse slip, right? Although, I don't know, maybe not, because Knight could have gone to F6, right? Oh, or maybe I have another idea. Maybe she has a bet that she isn't going to get G4. <laughs> maybe she wants to put that pawn on H4, like, you know, have every pawn on a dark square. But she has gotten her pawn to G4, and this does make me think that you're right, and this was a concept to play G5, G4, yeah. and then start developing the rest of her pieces, the bishop on f8 and the knight on on g8 starting with knight g6 though yeah it's a concept g... yeah look let me tell you the concept let white's knights get outposts on your fifth rank give up all the light squares and then and then resign that's the concept i think well yeah except <laughs> except you except alexandra has less time than her right that's so true. this is the thing you get a bad position you make your opponent figure out how to crush you yeah Will it work i don't think it's going to this time pawn takes e5 on the board um is she going to be taking with the f pawn the knight she can't take with the d pawn oh, she'll that. take with the f pawn i think yeah yeah rook d1 would be totally crushing in that spot yeah well look i mean it's not a great position what can i say i mean she ha she is playing this game things i'm making a few jokes about it because i do feel um 
I do feel like she just basically has thrown like all the, you know, positional principles to the wind and purposefully. I mean, it's not like she doesn't know what she's doing. And that just seems to be like, she was just, ah, I'm going to go and do this. And, you know, I think it could, it could work out pretty ugly for her. Um, but yeah, like she definitely played this game, like very differently from like all the other ones, by the way, queen e6 is an interesting move here. Yeah, or bishop g5 followed by bishop f6 and bishop e5. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't but, quite win. Queen e6 is maybe not the best, you know, because, like, they're going to take, and yeah, uh, there's no real point to do that, but um, but it is, like, a sort of move you look what about, at. What about, um? can we get, hmm, trying to think of ways to open the position here as we are obviously, like, very excited about doing that with that king on e8. Well, bishop g5, the nice thing about bishop g5 is it stops you from castling queenside even, right? Yeah. So bishop g5, knight f5, bishop f6. She's played pawn to f6. Okay. But that also has a similar idea, you know, like bishop g5. Wants to coming. go f7 maybe at some point. Um, let's see what else she wants. Like, yeah, maybe she wants to sack a knight, you know, get the queen in. Interesting idea, you know, bishop g5 after that. It's actually, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, bishop g5 will be like a useful move at any point and then f7. Yeah, you're right. But this combination of playing f7 and knight c7 here um, could be very dangerous. Everything's going to be dangerous here for Antoinette, though. I mean, come on, her king's on e8. So yeah. there's going to be no danger for his own. The question is if she can somehow survive and run her opponent out of time. Yeah, well, there right now, even on the clock, and she's thinking about what to do. Well, she, let's see. She can't move her bishop. She can't move her rook. She can't really move her queen. So can she still castle? Yes, she's allowed to. Oh, right? I think that's really great. It would be a good moment to remember about that because that might be like her, her best move at this point. Queen side castles, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then queen d5 threatens maiden one, but you do have c6, which seems to save the day. I don't think I have any crazy tactics there. Um, so cool. Yeah, she's still deep in thought. Not great. Oh, well, no. she's played queen c7. Oh, no, she no, 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 that is not going to do it. Um, I mean, queen e6, you're inviting the queen in. That looks really scary. Oh, my God. Look at I Alex's eyes. Did you see them pop? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Like her eyes popped. Wait, Why? let me see. Let me see that. Let me see that. Hold on. <laughs> he popped. And you can see them right under her glasses, just like, Whoa. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, two, yeah. two times, two times. They, they She's did very that. excited. Her tactical vision. I mean, Alexander Kostinuk, a brilliant tactical player. Um, she yeah. is like just looking at all the possibilities here. Queen e6 check, king d8. Yeah, so um, here's the thing. So there's a maiden one threat, but I suppose we can even go, I don't know, can we go rook d5 or something to defend against that? Is that like too slow? Um, well, there's just queen takes g4, yeah, which she was played. Yep. Just yeah. taking a pawn, attacking the knight, and stopping the checkmate. So that does a lot of things with one move. Yeah. What does black even do here? If she moves yeah. the knight to g6 or something, um, we can just go bishop g5. Is that threatening a mate? Not really, but it's uh, yeah, threatening it's pretty, devastation. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And I think it's devastation. Happens. That's what happened. Knight g6, bishop g5, queen d7, f7. Uh, uh, okay. and she's just oh, she trapped the rook. I okay. Well, this is yeah, trapped an exchange. So she yeah. wins the exchange. I, you know, you could you, you kind of wonder if she could have made it there, but yeah. probably, but this this with 20 seconds left on the clock. Actually, I mean, honestly, Stefanov has some play here. I agree. It's not over. Yeah. I mean. She really has like, I mean, okay, the only thing is that it's going to take a little while to win. You're going to go like king g2, rook f3, I think, but. If you catch up with the live position, um, yeah, I mean, Stefanova's yeah. position looks um, better than we would have expected, you know? So, yeah, uh, yeah some, some pretty solid play by there considering the opening. Uh, h4, 95 on the board, if you catch up with the live game. The knight has gotten into f3, and she's won her exchange pack, Irina. Wow. She's won her exchange wow, pack, wow. and now Stefan is actually up position. a pawn. Yeah. He's up a pawn. Uh, yeah, pawns are even, I think, Jen. Oh, I thought she... I thought she, yeah. <laughs> she, never, she didn't even have a pawn for the exchange, which is interesting, but like... Uh, okay, yeah, you're right. The even pawns. Yeah. But, um... Just but, I mean, her position, position is good. Her earlier. position has gotten good. And now it's like, again, okay, Alexandra's still up on the clock. 
Still yeah. up on the clock. Rook D1, probably. Yeah, Rook D1. Oh, and oh, there's and no fork. There's no, you know, don't step into the fork. Don't go King C6. Uh, okay, she just lost a pawn. Okay, Alexandra's gonna win this one again, isn't she? She's just gonna do her magic. There. Yeah, yeah. Two seconds left for Stefanova. Not enough time, especially not now that she's also got a bad position. Yeah. So this will be the last game of three yeah. minute, and wow. it's gonna give a six point edge wow six point edge for alexandra i mean yeah you see as soon as we got to that little amount of time we kind of knew alexandra would win and you know it's very tricky because right now there's like you can't take the pawn there's the fork on d5 it's just hard to play a move quickly right like rook f7 is threatened rook h7 um but yeah, Alexandra was completely dominating in this game. This is one of those the few games that she actually uh, messed up a winning position. But a really fascinating match and a crazy game. If we're going to see more crazy openings and ideas like that in the bullet, you're not going to want to miss the show. You know what? Stefana could just go in a roll. So you're not going to want to miss the potential tension um, up next. Kostenyuk versus Stefanova 1-1. But let's give you a little preview of... Um, the format going forward, as we've got a lot of women's speech chess champs coming up for you in the next months. So the format for every match is uh, the 90 minute portion, 5-1, 3-1 for 60 minutes, and then bullet, which we're about to get to in this match for 30 minutes. Um, player with the most points at the end of the match wins, and it's a bracketed format. So we're going to have one champion at the end. We're going to have a really interesting finals match. Tons of great matchups here. Noted that, that Polina Shuvalova, who's playing in the I'm Not a GM Speed Chess Championship against James Canty right after our show, mm -hmm. is also in the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Oh, very cool. She's going to be playing Tan Zhang Yi, a very strong player from China. Yeah, there's tons of amazing women players in this Speed Chess Championship. Um, I'm really looking also forward to the match between Carissa Yip and Hao Yifan that is going to happen in this first round uh, bracket. And the players who win this first round get $1,250 plus uh, they're splitting the uh, remaining money according to the number of points in the match. Uh, we can go over and take a look at the prizes here. And uh, But before we do that, we're going to go to a break, guys, and we will see you in the bullet in a minute.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Women's Speed Chess Championships presented by FIDE at chess.com. We um, are just about getting into the bullet portion of this thrilling match. Kostinyuk does have a massive lead, 11 and a half to Antoinette Stefanova's five and a half, but lots of chess yet to be played. 30 minutes on the clock, one minute and one second increment games. Irina, we know Kostinyuk's a huge favorite in the match itself, but who do you think is going to win the bullet portion? Well, I still have to say that I think Alexandra will win the bullet portion, but I think that uh, Antoinetta should be able to make it like a better, um, a better result than she had in the uh, three minute, which was really the roughest uh, part of the match for her. I think she will do better in the bullet. Um, and, but I still think that Alexandra uh, is a, is a favorite. So and we're off by the way, yeah. as as uh, Antoinette has returned to her Trompowski roots. And we yep. have a kind of wacky position here, but not a bad one. I want to, like, last game, it was, like, wacky and bad for Stefanova. For, for, sorry, for Stefanova. This is just wacky and, like, interesting. Um, no, no castling for either player so far. And how is Antoinette going to finish her development? Yeah, I mean, I can see her knight coming to c4 at some point in the future. So I think white position is easier to play. Mm -hmm. uh, she needs to not hang the d5 pawn, obviously important, like queen c7 now. It's a little tricky, right? Because she doesn't have that bishop d3 move because the knight, the, the pawn would hang. So I guess she's going to go like knight g3. And already it seems a little bit of a problem. Knight b6 was a good move. Um, 93 played, holding on to that pawn in a different way. I thought she was going to maybe take on b6. Yeah, oh, um, a5, oh. rather surprising. I guess she's trying to stop pawn a5. Uh, all right. Um, well, I like I like white because white managed to avoid the trade of any pieces, which I think is a... We'll see. Um, oh, wait, well, there goes white trading pieces. I guess black will take, maybe play g6 or something. Nope, she goes h4. H4, H3 has been played. Bishop H2, keeping our eye on the clocks. They're pretty yeah. even. Pretty even here. Very nice move by Alexandra. Makes a lot of sense, actually, going for the initiative. Who knows? She might even go, like, F4 in this game and knight G3, but okay. Well, but look at that. White plays F4 because it's a discovered attack on the knight on H5, allowing her this G5 square, now, now protected by the pawn on F4. Very good sequence there by Antoinetta. Yeah, okay. So castles queen side. We haven't seen that many castles queen sides in this match. Um, will there be like a rook takes e3 in this game followed by knight takes d5? I think it is it is a possibility. Such an idea exists in, in the position. Um, but she's not in a hurry, yeah. She is just improving her rook. She's gonna put it on e4 right now. Beautiful position for black and uh, white is on the defensive despite having won a pawn. Great play by Sasha. I mean, look at her go. Just so fast and so many good moves. Like, just so many so good, solid moves. Um, Rook takes f4, though. The nice pickup for um, for Stefanova as Rook f2. Rook takes f2. Now they are looking like it's a pretty even situation. But look at this. Bishop takes a4. Okay, Rook f6, counterattack. Yeah, so many tactics have happened. She that bishop snatched upon an h3, and now it's snatched upon an a4. It's pretty unusual. Uh, oh, c4. Was that good though? Why? Yeah. I don't know why she decides to give up the exchange. She's putting all her hopes in the a pawn. That was a little bit weird. Uh, she's gonna go rook a8. I mean, but now what though? Now I don't really see what she's doing. And white will eventually start. Yeah, white is actually going to go rook a2, win that pawn, and white is better. That's right. Yeah, this better. looks like Stefanova could get off to an early lead here in the bullet. But there's still a lot of work to be oh, done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of work to be done. Yeah. As soon as, gonna... I, as soon as I call the result before the game is totally over, you know it's going to go the other way. Oh, yeah. One thing about uh -huh. Alexandra's position is like the bishop on a6 is not that great, right? Um, although her king is getting pretty oh, good. Oh, yeah. That king is getting juicy. Look at the king. I, I mean, I thought the king could have taken a, a pawn, but... And there it is. She has taken the d-pawn. Mm. But look at the g-pawn go. Wow. Okay. As they are playing king, a lightning king, speed five. here. Yeah, king g, g7 now, and then king g... Okay, she just is up a rook. 
She's up a rook for three pawns, but look at that. Ale Antoinette barely was able to capture it in time. Wow, she only has like a second left. That's crazy. She needs to play so fast, bring back uh, that She game. needs to build up some wow. time, but that's rook very D3. hard to do with one second increment, right, yeah, Irina? Rook D3. rook D3 is good. Yeah, trade down. Uh, okay, trade the rook. Ah, she lost on time. Wow. Oh, oh no. So disappointing. Look at her oh, face. Oh no. Oh no. I, uh, I have a face, but I mean I'm about to see it in like in the hard. video feed. Uh yeah, that is oh, she's upset about that. That yeah. was a tough one because with those pawns, of course she's winning, but it required some technique. And you it's not a type of rook ending where you can get a bunch of checks and even gain like you know half a second. It, there was no possibility for that. So she was almost destined to lose on time in that point, I think. I mean, I'm sure some of the greatest bullet players in the world oh. would, you know, be able to make it happen, but it's like you need the you need that practice and skill with the, the mouse. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is 3-1 is a very particular chess.com uh time control because you know, when you play like yeah. let's say uh over the board, it's always gonna be three plus two is the standard control. So I think chess.com, I'm not sure you know, maybe to make the match, you know, to make the rounds go a little bit faster, uh, maybe to make, you know, uh, well, I'm not talking about this match, but in general to make uh, online cheating harder. Right. So they really shortened the increment to like a minimum, but I, I've definitely noticed like three, one, it's super easy to lose on time. It's like almost like the increment doesn't exist. I think it does for people who are laser fast but it's just hard i guess the key thing there would be like if you really if you were invited to one of these things um to play to try to practice with that exact time control i mean that yeah. would that and i'm sure they they have played in many of these events in the past particularly close to newt so she has but you're right it's not like people you know go into the one minute plus one second increment pool but anyway here we have another game where costa nukes now actually way behind on the clock in this italian game this two nights that she used um, in only one game in the match, if I recall correctly. And I mean, Antoinette has an amazing position and she's ahead 10 seconds on the clock. Her mm -hmm. position is just awesome. Look at yeah. that knight on e4. Bishop's coming nice to f5 to bolster four. it. Yeah. Very nice move. Knight g5 now and f3 maybe. Oh yeah, another way to do it. Try to play against it. Knight g5 is actually really powerful here, yeah? Knight g5. Uh, knight g5 was played. Nice move. And look at that, the potential of the bishop coming to g4 one day. She's played yeah, g6. She, and now oh, she can't go f3 yet. Uh huh. But the white queen is kind of stuck on h6, right? It's not really that well positioned at some point. Um, okay. Knight e6, good move. Maybe the knight will come to d4. I like knight d4, actually. Really nice. Yeah. Simple and strong. Yeah really good night i mean it's not that the bishop on c1 is the worst piece ever but it's no knight on d4 let's put it that way <laughs> yeah, this is a, good chance, a good chance for antoinetta to take this game oh yeah she's got six extra seconds too she's got to keep that time lead irena though because when she has the same amount of time as alexander it's really like she has less because she's not as fast right right she's not i don't know like she has to be careful with her back rank as well um but her position is so good like white's king is open and queen e4 just okay queen c4 great take another pawn come back sure very nice queen e4 so she really wants to trade uh rook e5 yeah and like rook d5 good king f7 right we know you're gonna improve the king uh put that king on maybe f5 or something a five e d mm, yeah okay sure Oh, nice. And well, I don't know. I don't really know where the king is going, but okay. Yes. But she's was... playing all her moves instantly. She's kept her time edge, which is pretty right. hard to do. You know, like it's very yeah, tempting. She just to... lost a pawn, which is. Oh, look at that. Oh, the rook bishop. Ah. Yeah. She played bishop d8 and rook takes d8. And um, Stefanova won one here in the bullet portion. Very nicely done. You know what was so impressive about that game, Irina, was that she just kept playing moves instantly, which, you know, seems like. If you're not in the thick of battle, that might seem easy, but it's really not. And, you know, she had lost a lot of yeah. games in previous matches by not doing that. So the fact that she was just able to play every move instantly, it was very good for her. Yeah, no, that was nice to see her be able to do that, right? Like she's capable of it, you know? It's just that oh, there's like an overall difference in the consistency, right? That you can see that Alexandra has, you know, played Blitz Chess her whole life, really spent a lot of time on it. And so in those key moments, she still is better, but it doesn't mean that, you know, um, you know, Stefanova is, is unable to win some games against her. Right. So 
Uh, let's see what's going on in this position. It's already pretty unusual, Jen. Oh, yeah, very. White has double pawns in front of the king. Actually looks pretty good for black. I mean, she's just going to be playing g6, opening up the king. Looks already pretty terrible for white. I'm, I'll be surprised if she can survive this. Very difficult position to play as white. And uh, just rook g8 now. She's going to, oh, wait, maybe there's f5. You have to be a little careful about this f5 move. How can she stop it, though? Aha, she moved the king. Good idea by Alexandra. And perhaps, I wonder if we'll see like a bishop c8 at some point in this game just to uh, prepare for that a little bit. Probably, probably not. Whoa, did she just blunder? Oh no, she didn't blunder the pawn. I mean, f4 is a threat. Okay. Uh, rook to g1 queen f7 and what black would really love to do is plant a knight on that square but what knight could do that how can she actually succeed in that plan it seems pretty tricky yeah right now white has held things together pretty well oh there we go we're seeing that plan in action maybe like knight f3 knight to h4 was an idea um but yeah this knight is definitely trying to come here c4 i think she'll close things up Nope, she didn't. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, I would say it's easier for Black to play this position, but, you know, Stefanova has held on very, very well uh, so far. Oh, yeah. And look at the time also. She's doing amazing. I mean, I think that, she, you know, we might end up seeing her um, get more points in this bullet portion by the way she's playing so far. Look at that, yeah. taking the pawn off on f5. Excellent. Look, Queen takes more time. She has more time. She's actually doing really well. Yeah, I think herself. she might win the second game in a row. I mean, I, I hate to jinx her, but <laughs> I mean, look at this. Now she's got now she's got everything under control. She's got 10 seconds more. Yeah, f5, great move. And just rook g7 and e6. And let's just, I don't know, rook d7. Yeah, good, good. Put the rook behind the pawn. Rook d4, easy. Okay, rook d6 is fine. Rook d4 was a tempo. Oh, that move confuses me. Okay, yeah, there we go. You can still take the bishop, put the rook back. Right, totally. And now, you know, king g4 would be a good move. F4, protect. F4 is good. F4 but this is good, too. Him. Yeah, everything here Fantastic should win. by her. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, Look and her great time, time management. She's really getting a hang of it. Yep. Well, this is what I'm telling you. Like, you... Uh, this, this bullet, it's like, it's uh, you, you never know. Like even someone who feels like they're the slower player in the five minute and three minute, like it can actually wind up to be uh, quite fast in bullets. So, um, but we'll see. I did predict that Alexandra was gonna win this part, but I don't know. Right now, Stefanova, I think she has uh, taken more the lead points, in the bullet. Right? Yes. yes, it's two to five. one. Five point lead in the match for Alexandra, but um, so far Stefanova has won two bullet games to one for Kostinyuk. She'd probably have to win every single game to tie up the match and take it to tiebreaker, yeah. I'd say. So something, nah, not, no, that's not true, right? Almost every game. There's yeah, probably pretty, about you know, eight pretty, games pretty, left. Pretty, pretty much every game. No, because they got like 17 yeah. something minutes. Yeah, I, I think, uh, and, and the games are taking at least like two minutes, so. Two, two and a half minutes. Okay, you're right. You're right. Probably she has to win almost every game. Maybe she could draw one. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, but look at this. So bishop takes f7 check with the idea that if king f7, knight e5. But just the move king e7 um, was played. And this is actually pretty interesting because e4 is a threat. Bishop f3 followed by king f7 is a threat. So wow. funny little bishop position here. Just wins the knight. She's going to do it, right? Isn't she? Yeah, and then she's maybe Quan takes d4. Or should she take on d4? Yes, yeah, she did. Oh, wow. Oh, could, she have take, like, cause, could she have taken like this, this bishop and then, and then after this move, I don't know what, what exactly she would have had to do. But to she took on, um, she did end up taking on F7 at the end of the day and she was still up a piece here. After knight B6, rook D1 could be played, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, black is just up a piece. I mean, is there, what is there? There's not even a pawn for it, Irina. Oh, there is 96, true. Oh, there's going to be two pieces for it, but it's still completely winning, right? And yeah. again, she's she's up on the clock, actually. 
She's doing really well. Like I can see C5 happening here. Okay, Rook F3. Okay, that's still, oh. Oh, that, that makes things a little bit less yeah. uh, clear. Although- she's really fast, but you know, she's definitely made some mistakes, but now at least she's like in a very clear position where she's better. Like this is not like fun for black at all, you know? I mean, for white. Yeah, yeah, and she can make a lot of moves quickly. Yeah, I mean, of course that is the price. Playing instantly, you will make more mistakes. And that is why it's hard for so many, for a lot of elite players who prefer classical or rapid to blitz to, to do this. So she's forcing herself to do it for better or worse. Yeah. We will see Alexandra's technique, but the problem is white will put the king on F4 where it's really safe. And I'm not so sure that black really has any winning ideas. I mean, the king is great there and just stay, right? Right, stay with the king. Uh, um, okay, maybe she can win. She's gonna have to go for it. Just go for king c4, although that still doesn't really do anything. Maybe this king is gonna have to go to like e2. Mm. She tried rook h4, knowing that rook takes b2, rook h4, check, yeah, king g5. Oh, really yeah. exactly. Everything's coming well, off now, though. They're, now, they're, now they're gonna have to take that draw, right? Yeah. As um, they were probably the way they often seem to do it in these cases. This time they did agree, but I, I noticed that a lot of good players just just repeat so that they don't they avoid uh, actually offering the draw and taking some of their own time away. But this case, they had so much time it was just the easier way to do it. Yeah, you know what's interesting? Um, I don't know why I thought about it. I think because I brainstormed and said Naka probably playing bullet with Ali Reza in their room. It sounds really funny. You know, I did see this video on YouTube, Jen, where Hikaru, I don't know if you saw this one, he's like sitting at the board and he makes a, like a movement with his hands. Like, like instead of, you know, like instead of a movement where he's like taking a pen, it's literally like this, you know, like this kind of movement, you know? And he's like, like you know, it's so instinctive to him to pick up the mouse that <laughs> that's, that's what he's doing it over the board chest. I thought that was just a great moment. Yeah, that's hilarious. I love that. It's so funny. Yeah, you, know, in, you guys can find that on YouTube. In poker, you're allowed to play um, online poker at the same time that you're playing a real poker tournament. In many cases, I guess there are some exceptions. Wow, like what do you mean like two simultaneous? Yeah, so you play like on your phone, the online, and then you also play live. And That's for, pretty crazy. That is really yeah. impressive, I would say. It, yeah, so people can get confused there and like they're like, I have kings online all in, oops. <laughs> that was my online table. Oh wow! Have you ever done that, John? Like, no, 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 never, never. I, I don't. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't play two at once like that in the uh, casino. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on in this position. I mean, I, I guess the material is equal, but it looks like White's really got things under nice control with the two bishops. Unless, unless we we don't have any problem defending that pawn, right? I mean, just F four should be okay, yep. and. Uh, question is does d4 do anything yeah, it's still tricky i mean very yeah. tricky rook c1 i guess is an obvious move um yeah at some point you're going to want to protect that pawn is she going to go f4 i think she should just go f4 it's so simple Ooh. no she played knight Ooh, bishop that d4, hang, knight d4 that and yeah. Knight d2. yeah that hung a bishop oops okay well but, but, that but kostinik didn't see it kostinik didn't see it because they were playing so quickly maybe even pre moving yeah. But I mean, Stefanova, I think Stefanova saw it and she's like in shock and that kind of took some time off her clock. And I mean, now really hard to play psychologically for her, but um, rookie two or something. Okay. I mean, God, they're playing so fast. Queen D4 just hoping to trade queens because her king is the one that's in more peril here. Will Alexander agree to the queen trade? No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And she wants to play e4. How about e4 right here? Is there e5? Is that the problem? Uh yeah, e4. There you go. You Good really want to undermine that knight. Yeah, that's right. With those knights, you want to undermine them. Whoa, what's that? What's that? That was weird. She just so the right the right way to do the tactic was bishop takes d5, right? I think. All right, but she's still better. She's yeah, she better. is. She's got the better better piece um she is technically down a pawn but that's going to change in a second Ooh, bishop f1 is a nice move keeping the bishop of course and limiting the knight uh okay bishop e2 so she's got things under control she can rig before nice work before very nice yeah so mm. now she had to, to make that exchange otherwise she's gonna lose Ooh, nice. oh there it is she wins by resignation what a nice game there at the end three one 
So a four point lead for Sasha. This is like one of the smallest leads we've had in ages, Irina. Yeah, yeah. Wow, is it only four points? Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good that uh, 11 minutes are remaining. I guess it is It is technically possible for her to win all her games and still win. It'll be very close. I think it's, and she also wants to win these games quickly. Alexandra, it's going to be close. Remember there was yeah. that draw in a game that I think she should have won. That, that yeah. could end up making it impossible for her. But also, I mean, just because she's won three and a half, one and a half so far, doesn't mean that she can really easily win every game like it, in this yeah. particular case it's it looks pretty nice for uh, sasha actually yes uh i would say i like white's position like the center space um and i guess she's gonna try to some attack on the king maybe okay d5 knight d4 is probably her idea or queen d4 e5 yeah i really e5. like white here easier to play. play five i would play five just quickly yeah, this is a nice little Grunfeld. I mean, very difficult to play these Grunfelds in Blitz Chess. I like the Grunfeld opening, but I don't know, man. I want, I want to have some time on my clock to deal how, to figure out how to deal with your rolling pawns. Hey, Jen, let me ask you. Like, I know, so you were a Grunfeld player. Um, it was pretty much your whole life, right? Yeah, I tried the Nimzo at some point. Yeah. Well, so what opening would you go to, like, if you weren't playing the Grunfeld? What would be your, like, second opening to try to learn? Um, I, I don't know. I never found anything that I really like that much. I guess I would love to be able to play the King's Indian well. Yeah. Yeah. Knight. Yeah. Why? Oh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking because, you know, like I played the Queen's Gambit accepted as my main opening my whole life as black, but I think, you know, it's always good to expand. So I'm just, uh, uh, I have some ideas about that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear you. Yeah, it's I mean, hard. It's always interesting because yeah, like we tend to as chess players like learn one opening while most of us, right? Like we don't play everything, and um, and it's always an interesting question. Like, what would be your second choice if you could just um add add another main one? I did do the Nimzo for a while, you know, and that, and, and 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 you know you, you get a lot of good positions with it, but it's just so much work because there's so many different pawn structures. Now, by the way, what's going on here? Who's gonna come out at the end of this frenzy? It looks like it's going to be black again. Wow. Black is just winning, right? But maybe like, not. Rook C7, maybe. she just blundered something. Rook C7 and the king has like nowhere to go because there's Bishop C6 and Knight E6. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Wow. That and, was and, a big And what about king, and king F6? Yeah, Knight E4 check. Like oh, four. but then you just lose on C2. Yeah, and then your knight okay. is dropped. And, yeah, nice, dropped. nice. So this should be the match, I'd say, I mean, I think after yeah. this, it will be impossible. Yeah. So, uh yeah very nice little um god they, you know they're playing so quickly irena it's hard to say they're playing too quickly because it's bullet yeah <laughs> yeah that was a really key moment i mean we can just I, like right now it's clear that she's yeah winning, exactly like, it's totally winning for white um, and but okay well the game is over oh well <laughs> no time for analysis and bullet um so nine to 14 so five game difference yes it does look like alexandra's gonna win the match stefanova is back to the trumpowski but we've got a few more good good exciting games left to go and um yeah it's it'll be it'll be fun let's see if stefanova can at least win the bullet portion right now it's three and a half for her two and a half for Ooh, sasha look at this i mean alexandra wants it to be exciting g5 and like in why not in style sure sure why not, why not? I, yeah, we, we gotta, <laughs> you can you know, do it you can do whatever you want in bullet you know yeah you know she knows that she's won the match and now let's have some fun of course she wants to win but she can try to have fun while doing it maybe f5 here hmm well, she's taken on d4 to, to kick yeah, things off. Yeah, takes d4. Yeah, I don't think that capture helps black very much. Um, you know, I like white. Okay, so she, I wouldn't have captured. I would have kept that pawn kind of useless on e3, but I mean, now she's going to castle, right? And I think her position is perfectly fine for, for bullet chess. Yeah. Um, I agree. Seven. And some, in fact, like, the, the, one of the problems here, though, is that she's down 30 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she wants to, what, does she want to castle a queen side? No, castle a king side. It's safe. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, I, I misspoke. I meant 10 seconds. She's down mm -hmm. 30 seconds to Antoinette's 40. Uh-huh, b5. She wants nice. to go to b5. Nice. Oh, what? Really? What? Take on g5? Why? Wait, how did that happen? Okay. Yeah, she just took, 
Oh, uh, is there a tactic? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So now taking an F5 and. Nice tactic. She won a really important pawn. Didn't yeah, you? very important because now when the bishop goes to like g6 or d3, queen h5 is going to be mating. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Antoinette is going to win this one. Oh, well, bishop e8, good move. Mm -hmm. Trying to stop the immediate checkmate. Mm -hmm. Rook f8, bishop f8. Rook's probably going to come back to f1 to join the party. Yeah, knight Maybe. of three. Knight of three here, knight e5. Mm. But knight c4 kind of trying to hold the balance here and make it an end game, which is definitely going to be good for Antoinette, but not as easy to win um, because, hey, yeah, a lot of t <laughs> you only have 20 seconds, a lot of moves you need to make to win this end game. Um, yeah. Bishop h4, great. Oh, Love it. Wow. Now g3 would fall to knight f3. Yeah. So keeping it tricky. You just got to like make your opponent think on as many turns as you can. Like little tricky moves like bishop h4 are so effective. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually kind of scary for the white king. I don't know. Like, there are some issues here, but Antoinette has been playing really well. Knight g5. It's like so annoying to face these moves, you know, with this, like, you're wow, really? Wow, look at that. Getting her, extricating her Pretty king cool. bravely, allowing the discoveries. Yeah, that's very right. nice. Nicely done but by Antoinette. Yeah. Um, maybe like knight e3. No, knight c3. Yeah, she's right. She doesn't want to trade. d5. There you go. Oh, where's the knight supposed to go now? Knight e2. Uh huh. d6, I guess. Push. Knight d4. Yep. Okay. Now knight e6. Okay. Now it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Now I think she's got the game. Um, and she is up a piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe rook b4 somewhere. But it's not that trivial still. I guess, I guess black can't really push the pawn. She has to go rook b2. Oh, knight d4. That'll make it easier. You yeah, were thinking H4, that. H4, no. She decides to give some checks. Good idea. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, very smart. Yeah. H4, and just keep going with the pawn. Yeah, just go h5, h6, and at some point, black is going to be in trouble. Yeah, when she's determined, in, like in this case, knight h4. knight h4 looks like a nice move, although this also works quite well. Um, you know, that's, yeah, I would have liked knight h4 just to kind of like yeah. finish it off. But this is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, yeah. It's, it's, it's not rook and bishop, you know? Yeah, because we see how she really is capable of playing quickly in the bullet. I think it's like sometimes oh. when you just know that you need to play fast, like you yep. force yourself to do it. Um, but the fact that sometimes in these three minute games, there's a couple moments where you think can be a bit misleading, disarming. And there it is, another uh, four point lead. Gosh, she's crushing this bullet match, but there's yeah. not likely to be enough wow. time for her, Irina. This might actually be the last game, possibly, probably two more games, though. Yeah, nice job by Antoinette. Really nice play in the bullet. I mean, yeah, it's nice when somebody like, uh, Surprise! Kind of, yeah, kind of redeems himself a little bit by like, of yeah. course, they lost a match, but showing um, that they're able to recover in such a fashionable way is it's really nice to see. Yeah, yeah, I love the whole concept of the speed chess championship and like you know how you can see the players uh, up close and they're you know playing from home is very convenient for the players as well. And such an event would be so hard to put together in person, right? So I really appreciate that chess.com um, and FIDE have, you know, come, come together to organize this as an annual event. Oh, it's great. I love this event. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, women like this, like Stefanova and Kostanyuk, you know, they've been on top of their field for so long, Irina. And, you know, so in a way it's not surprising to see, you know, uh, Antoinette uh, recover so well because like that's what they've been doing for decades now. Yeah, although I yeah. think in this position, Jen, we haven't yet had time to speak about it. It's going to be checkmate on the next. Ah, game. checkmate! Yeah, right in time for us to look at it. I mean, that was pretty crushing by Alexander. That centralization that she had with the rooks and the knights was just kind of amazing. So, uh, so it was a know, bit maybe, drawish in the beginning. I like, think I you thought... know what's interesting, Jen. I think the question is. So who is going to win the bullet portion? Like we know, St and Toinette is like ahead by one point now. And this is the last game. Oh, it's the last game. So, so it's going to be either, uh, it's either going to be a draw or a win for Antoinette. So yeah. let's see if, if Alex can um, actually even the score here. I, yeah, I yeah. like uh, Stefanova's position. I would really want to beat my opponent to like be able to 
say to myself that I won one part of the match, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Why yeah. not? So even a draw would do that, but you know, draws aren't as common in bullet. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's not going to be any, any kind of draw offers here. Um, okay. So Black, six. I don't know what she's thinking. About. She this could even take on E3 and take on H3. Oh, ah. but, uh, no, she just pushed her Bishop back. Hmm. What is that knight H2 about? She wants to take on H5. No idea. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. Okay. But she's staying really ahead on the White clock. Been, yeah. I don't know what white's been doing. But I kind of like the trajectory more for black, although. Now um, that there's a queen trade, I kind of like white structural advantage. Mm. Um, wow. F5, okay. Maybe king d2. I think she'll put the king there eventually. Knight yeah, G2. No need the castle. That's instructive yeah. because Knight it's F4. an end game, so you don't really need your king on g1. Hmm. And now what? Okay. Okay. So she's pushing the pawns, but now what? Where is she going with those pawns? It's not so clear to me. F3 is a nice little move, stopping the knight from coming to any, hmm. any key squares. Rook G7 kind of trying to keep the balance, but look at this. Stefanova ahead by like 17 seconds. Yeah. She's really doing great with her clock in this uh, bullet portion. Yeah. I think she's going to go, go king E3, king F4. Mm, great idea. That king is a really a beautiful king there. We don't really talk about outpost kings very much, but that looks kind of like an outpost king. Yeah, I'm not, well, so, not so much anymore. Good. Not so yeah. much anymore. Now she that C4 kind of gave up played. the D5 square to the black pieces. I'm not such a fan of that idea. Oh. I don't know how it helped her. It kind of helped black, but... Um... She's playing lightning speed, Irena. Yeah. And sometimes the thing right. about trades is that when you make a trade, you can make it so quickly. Whoa. Oh, they, whoa. they just get a draw. Is is um, and they're out of time. It looks like we're out of time. So in a way, um that so she won the she won the bullet. He did. <laughs> yeah. She did win the bullet portion, did Antoinette Stefanova. And um, Alexander Kostanyuk is the winner of this intensely competitive speed chess championship match, Irena. I yeah. mean, I, I almost feel like it, they they played so great as the match progressed, right? Yes. I definitely feel like um, they each had their moment to shine. Um, probably in terms of the chess, the closest part was, well, I mean, the five minute was quite close. Um, Alexandra used her swindling skills there. The three minute was definitely dominated by Alexandra. And, um, you know, she just played faster and better. And she got, you know, was playing better chess in that portion. And then Antoinette turned it around for the bullet and kind of showed that, okay, you know, she can play really fast and she managed to win the bullet section. So it is a close match. I think that, you know, five minute portion was uh, quite critical. Yeah. Very entertaining match. I mean, the bullet, they were both playing so quickly, particularly Stefanova, um, brilliant quick play, but congratulations to Alexandra, chess queen, Kostinyuk for um, her fantastic performance here in the first round of the Women's Speed Chess Championships. We're going to be right back. We are going to have an interview with the chess queen herself, so don't go away.
we are here with the champion, Grandmaster Alexandria Costinu. Congratulations on your performance today. What was the highlight for you? Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Well, it's quite hard to say about highlights for the moment because I'm quite tired. Actually, these matches are very long and uh, I find it very difficult to uh, be able to keep like the same level of concentration throughout the match. And uh, I, I was already tired after the first uh, stage, so now I'm even... Um, more um so i mean it's quite difficult to to analyze right now i think i need some time to rest first and then i can you know go over games and analyze them but of course i'm happy to win yeah congrats um i i saw on your twitter that you were going to be in madrid for the candidates are you there yet or are you en route no, I'm in Paris right now because we just finished playing the French team championship. Actually, it was it, it ended yesterday and we just got back to Paris uh, with my husband and uh, we're going there. Yeah, just to visit for a few days uh, next week. So chess tourism. <laughs> what? Were you surprised, Alexandra, like uh, by Antoinette's improvements in the bullet portion? Mm, well, um, I... <laughs> I said to myself that most likely it's due to my um, lack of concentration. But yeah, at some games, <laughs> I was like, I thought that we, we were playing with the same speed. But then only <laughs> looking at the time, I realized that she was like leading plus 30 seconds. So at this point, um, I realized that I don't feel time anymore. And uh, um, but at the same time, I think I was able to get back and uh just forget about everything else and try to well to to do whatever i <laughs> i can do at this uh point because of, definitely bullet is not my uh favorite time control to say <laughs> the least i don't uh, like playing one minute games uh okay we still have one second increment here but it's just too fast for me Actually, we got a question from the Twitch chat and you know, welcome to all our viewers. Thank you so much. BGH13 says, can you tell us, Alexandra, how Blitz is different for you from Bullet when it comes to your mindset? Well, Bullet, you just make moves. You don't have time to calculate almost at all. Uh, of course, I mean, at some point, like once or twice per game, if you got already some time thanks to this increment, it's important to stop and think. I mean, if, for example, you feel that your position is completely winning, it's very important just to stop, think, and just take material, for example. But, um, yeah, I just don't consider bullet to be chess. It's just something, I don't know, just some uh, purely uh, intuitive skills that you are demonstrating. Uh, okay, I know guys that play, <laughs> play so great uh, and one minute uh, with one minute time control, but I'm definitely not. Uh, <laughs> no, I just, um, I'm just not that fast. I mean, it's just purely, um, purely mouse skills and whatever <laughs> can move, should move. Well, Irene and I were commenting that you just seem to um, be such a great fighter. And there's so many games against Stefanova where you were in trouble and you just kept fighting and turned it around. Um, what are your tips for just pulling off more swindles and um, fighting spirit and blitz? But I think, I mean, concentration in general is very important in chess and it's blitz in blitz i think it's just the the main um quality that uh, really required uh and i think um i had some blackouts throughout this match like in a few games where i blundered uh, two pieces with black and then uh in a few moments where i missed some i mean stronger moves but uh, other than that i was happy about my overall uh, level of concentration because in uh, these matches well i cannot say that i've played many of them but uh, uh from the experience that i have uh, i mean the minute uh, you start uh, losing your concentration, then mistakes and blunders come and it can, you know, just be game after game after game after game. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, score advantage you have at this particular moment, but it just can, everything can turn around so fast that uh, 
Well, just, yeah, you just need to concentrate and uh, f stay focused. And uh, actually, whatever happens uh, on the board, if you're still in the game, meaning if you're still trying to make moves, you should try to make uh, uh, best moves, uh, whatever <laughs> material advantage time uh, situation or uh, you have on the board. So you just move by move, step by step, game by game. Alexandra, it looks like you're going to be playing the winner of uh, How You Fawn, Carissa Yip. And we wanted to wish you the best of luck in your upcoming matches. And we'll be following you here on chess.com. Congratulations. Thank you so today. much. Thank you, Irina. Congratulations. What a tremendous performance and bon voyage to Madrid. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. That was fantastic, Irina. You know, what yeah. a treat it was to watch these. Uh, two fantastic former women's world champions and you know two players who have stayed on the top for so many years the longevity there and you know I, I really like the way that alexander talked about concentration because that's one of the reasons i think chess is so good for everybody for kids but also for for grown-ups who have so many distractions and you know chess allows you to kind of enter another realm where nothing else matters and the fact that she can just get herself into that consistently for so many years is is beautiful to see. Yeah, definitely. Also, you know, really helps to have um, played a lot of Blitz from childhood. And I know Alexandra um, you know, has been uh, really devoting, you know, quite a good portion of um, attention to that, you know, since she was little. And I think it definitely showed in this match, you know, she just had those natural skills and she could play better at the critical moments. Absolutely. And just like to keep fighting, even when everything looks like you're losing the game. Now, speaking of fighting, we've got a double header for you is in just a few minutes, we're going to be switching over to one of my favorite events on chess.com. I love this event. Well, I love the women's speed chess championships. And I also love the I'm not a GM speed chess championships, which is going to feature yeah. another great female player, international master Polina Shuvalova versus FIDE master James Canty the third. We got commentary on deck with Amon Hamilton and um, Jeffrey Zhang. Um, what a show um, is lined up for you. Um, you know, one of the reasons I love seeing so many top female players is it's been my mission for my entire career to get more girls and women into this game. And I just came out with a book about that, Chess Queens. So, Irina, you're featured in the book, your quest to become the first female in America to get the Grandmaster title. Successful yeah. quest. Yeah, it's, it's a great, great timing for this book, Jen, as you know, female uh, ch uh, chess has gotten so much more attention after the uh, film Queen's Gambit. So um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to reading your book as well. Thank you so much, Irina. And you know, it's never enough until we get closer to 50% women all over chess, the Twitch chat, the championship ring, everywhere. So thank you to everybody in the chat for being so supportive of this event on the rest day from the candidates and stick around for the I'm Not a GM Speed Chess Championships. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to everyone at chess.com and FIDE for making it happen. Irina, this is a blast. Well, you know, the great thing, Jen, is that we're gonna repeat this fun tomorrow because it's gonna be you and me commentating on uh, Hikaru's channel. So you guys can uh, watch us here or watch the commentary on chess.com. Uh, with Daniel Wrench and all the team in Madrid. You guys have a big choice of where to, uh, where to follow the action, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love it. Bye, everyone. Stick around.